uh, seventh session, I believe. Yeah. Okay, so it's been a bit of a pause. We've just revised uh, our understanding of current events. So I believe the plan was to return to the St. Agnes Asylum for the Deranged following your discovery of a newspaper article seemingly <laughs> just flat out stating that um, Alexander Roby uh, has been killed at the asylum. And it is, uh, as far as we understand now, it is December 4th. And uh, yeah, are you departing London once again for Herefordshire? Now, obviously, uh, I will have objected to returning to St. Agnes yet again because I don't see that we're going to find anything. We haven't found anything before. There's been another murder when there was previously a murder and they were like, oh, obviously a madman did it. And there was like no evidence. And this seems to be sort of more of the same thing. But if Thaddeus really wants to go, obviously he's he's my brother-in-law. And given that he's recently been talking about having dreams about this devil man who supposedly committed the first murder... I'm I'm getting a little bit concerned about him. So if, if he wants to go, I will, even though I've protested, I, I will go along purely because I want to make sure Thaddeus is all right, to be honest. <laughs> Maybe we don't need to go back to St. Agnes, per se. <clears throat> uh, I've been scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And... Maybe I'm just not finding it, but uh, Johannes, can you remember what that detective from uh, Scotland Yard were called uh, that came to see um, Thaddeus about? Um... Yeah, uh, let me get the name. <laughs> was, was it Inspector John Stevens? Mm, John Stevens is uh, another one. There's like three names, and John Stevens is one of them, but not the one that we're looking for. Here we go, Inspector Detective Taylor. Yeah, Andrew Taylor. Yep. Perhaps you should go to him and show him the letters from uh, this uh, mysterious uh, Gresty. I mean, if if you think that's wise, Thaddeus. Uh, now, obviously, the the letters were were addressed to you. I mean, it, it's entirely your decision about what you want to do with them. I mean, if you think it's wise to go and to go and show this uh, D detective Taylor the letters, and it might help, then well, yes, what, why not? But uh, obviously, the these letters were addressed to you in confidence. They were. But they might, they most likely will uh, <clears throat> pertain to uh, the whole um, strange affairs with uh, Mr. Roby and his uh, questionable, uh, questionable friends, um, the occultists. I'm not uh, convinced this uh, Gresty isn't one of them. And I do find it odd that the. Uh... The, the recent murder obviously we speculated previously that it uh, due to what we've seen that it might be uh, one of the orderlies at St Agnes who was involved in it but uh, it, it does seem that we may have been justified in that given that two of them apparently vanished mm. shortly afterwards and haven't been seen since but I, 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 I must admit I'm or, or I'm something of a, of a social butterfly you might say I'm a I'm at a bit of a loss as to how we might uh, locate the two missing orderlies uh, I mean presumably they, they won't have had they won't have been silly enough to go back to anywhere where they're known if they're trying to lay low newspaper did mention they're both from Lewminster yeah so which is close by we could go there and if nothing mm. else just get a you can make a drawing of uh, this uh Mark Evans. And oh yes, I'm. Uh, I remember his face. Fairly distinctive. Yes, and um, if they live in, if they're from that village, surely someone uh, there would have known them. Well, yes, we we we, we could ask around. I mean, it certainly wouldn't do any harm, old boy. 
but I do think we should um, take our precautions this time because um, I don't think we should just dismiss this whole uh, vampire conspiracy. Well, no, I mean, clearly, given given the almost uh, ritualistic nature of the, the the stabbing someone and then inflicting wounds on oneself, there's, cl there's clearly some dark business going on here, that is, and uh, g given our recent experience, uh, as you say, we, we can't afford to dismiss it out of, hand, out of hand like we might once have done. Yes. But surely as well there'd be people in Lowminster who maybe know a bit more about the asylum than people are letting on. You know, they might have seen things before or heard about things. Well, yes, yeah, quite. It's it's certainly worth uh, going and having a look, Olivier. I mean, worse, absolute worst case scenario, we're no worse off than we are now. Mm. So since I mean, we could try to talk to this uh, driver. I forgot his name. Oh, well, Halliwell. <laughs> Harrywell. Um, it seems they uh, once again pinned the uh, murder on him. Well, here's, here's an idea for that. Uh, how about uh, you know that uh, that detective fellow that we uh, that we dealt with previously? Uh, his his name escapes me. Uh, what Vincent Tuck? Yes, Tuck. That, that's the the very fellow. Uh, why don't we? Uh, since, since he's already done some work for us before, why don't we? Why don't I wave a small amount of? cash under his uh, under his nose and we we hire him to sort of canvas this Leominster area and see what he can find out I can do the drawing and provide him with that that's not a problem then whilst he's doing that like obviously compiling a report for us we can we can go and turn over those letters if you want that is then when we get back we can have a look at his report see if we think it merits further investigation I mean if he comes back and says oh no I asked around Leominster and showed the 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 image around no one knows anything we've saved ourselves a good deal of legwork mm -hmm. so we don't want to go to St. Necros well as, as I've said that is it I personally don't believe we'll gain a great deal more for it but if you think it'll be useful I'm quite happy to accompany you like I say give it given well, if nothing else just to make absolutely sure there's no well, that, that, that's absolutely nothing to fine. be gained I mean maybe maybe we can talk to the local uh, constables and see what they found on the site um, that somehow uh, don't really well, that, expect that's... much from them but that's absolutely fine old boy I'm quite I'm quite a two to accompany you if you think that's the case. I mean, given that, given given all that the three of us have seen, and half of which would not be believed by anyone else, I think whatever we're doing, it's it's clear that obviously we're all in this together, and we should stick together as much as possible, because we, as far as I'm aware, we we can't really rely on anyone outside our own little circle here. Most people either wouldn't believe us. Or well, they're involved in this devilish business to some dark end that I I can't quite fathom. So if you, if you if you want to go to St. Thomas, I think we should all we should all go as a group, watch each other's backs, keep make sure we're all safe. And we might as well, you know, pop next door to Lewminster. Yes, yes. So what? Why not? I don't see hiring a. Alcoholic private investigator. How that will help us. Yeah. Well, I I think you'd rather find it difficult to to, to find a private investigator is probably not a little bit of an alcoholic. Certainly, if uh, <laughs> if the people I've uh, socialised with uh, during my time or anything to go by, uh, I think it's a it's a very high stress profession from what I understand. Well, yes, giving from our own encounter with uh, this investigation, it surely is stressful. Um, but I feel more comfortable if we did it ourselves. And we also know what to look for. Yeah, that's very true, Olivier, very true. Yes. Well, it, it, it sounds like we're settled then. We're, we're heading back to St. Agnes and then we're going to look at Leminster. 
Yes, so uh, let's pack the warm clothes. So uh... wrapping up. Indeed. All right. So you depart from Decembery, London, to head into Yon, Herefordshire, once again, and uh, we'll just do a. Blah, 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 and now you're there. Uh, so I think it will be. Oh, well, we talked about you meeting and discussing this stuff in the previous session, if I don't completely misremember, over breakfast. So you could make it today. So you could arrive in on the 4th of December at St. Agnes. OK, if you can, that I would prefer that. Yep. Yeah, I think it's uh, plausible. OK. So yeah, you arrive. Uh, we'll just in the interest of getting through some of this stuff, uh, you will have obviously met with Dr. Highsmith. <laughs> That'd be awkward. <laughs> hey, remember us? The guys who um, checks notes, roofied you? Yeah, that's us. <laughs> yeah, remember, remember us? We're the showers and drugs posse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Um, yeah, so... Highsmith is fairly distraught, and you are a relief to him, it seems. Uh, just some familiar faces in the midst of uh, what is to him quite a bad time. Um, you get the impression that he's quite shaken. Uh, he had a lot invested in Roby. Uh, from, as we know, a medical standpoint, like we've discussed about this before, he has a lot writing on the the case of Roby, so to speak. So Highsmith is uh, very distraught. However, uh, he welcomes you in. He offers you a place to sleep once again. And uh, he does mention uh, in the evening, because you, you probably, you're going to want to talk to Harrywell, was it? Or I mean, what? it will just... Ask Highsmith if um, mm -hmm. indeed the the knife mentioned in the the newspaper article was uh, it just said something it was found at another inmate in the possession of a second inmate. So would that be Halliwell? Yeah, that that is that is Harrywell. Oh. So it it seems once again he committed yep. murder. Yep, it seems like Harrywell is behind this once again. And as you talk about this, uh, Highsmith does mention, and you see he has, um, uh, he has a whiskey bottle that's like two thirds empty now. And uh, he offers to pour you some as well in his office. He oh, takes it. That's he, very, very, very kind of you, old boy. Thank you. Yeah, he empties it out between the, uh, the four of you. How and, decline, uh, I'm afraid of being roofed. Yeah, he takes yours as well. <laughs> and he mentions that uh, lighting up his uh, ever-present pipe, he uh, does mention that I, I, have, I have no idea where to go with this now. I, Harry, well, uh, well, you've, we've t discussed this previously, the case of Harry, well, the killing from before, uh, you have your own conclusions by now, I expect, because you are men of intellect. Um, things don't necessarily line up, and they do so in decreasing amounts uh, in this case as well. I do not know where to go with this. I've had Mr. Roby's brother over here, obviously, to identify the body. Of course. Uh, 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 Mr. Mr. Roby, by which I mean Graham, claims that the body is not Alexander's, as it is missing a scar on one of the upper arms, apparently incurred in childhood accident by Alexander. I hadn't made note of that. Uh, <laughs> these these things do escape my notice. I presume he is talking about a very distinctive yet subtle mark, which <laughs> that that was not a birthmark. I know about. Alexander's birthmarks. This must have been a scrape of some kind, which left a mark, which Graham 
claims well it is blatant it is not on the body that we have did we find out uh, the identity of the body then well <laughs> it's it's either alexander or if you or um, someone else i suppose if you don't... Which, like he he's he's just like frustrated in the extreme and he goes to uh his cabinets and he's like where did i put that on? I'll, I'll just i'll just take out one of my ever present flasks and just sort of like put it on the table next to his glass yeah i'll say and then i'll say if, if, if you don't mind me asking you, i appreciate this is a a very delicate um and quite quite difficult time for you dr highsmith um the, the the fact that the uh, the the knife was found in the possession of uh, yet yet again of uh, an inmate is is there any is there any uh, thoughts about how the inmate might have uh, have acquired the knife? I mean, I presume he wasn't just wandering around. Well, I wouldn't know. Uh, they found him out of his straitjacket. I, the door was open. I don't. I don't know what happened, my friends. Okay, I and, have to. Yep. I just got a text that I need to call someone, so I okay. need to do that. I'm sorry. Yep. Thaddeus steps out with his mobile phone. <laughs> yes. I'm oh, sorry. I'll be right back. I was say, but and then I, I gather you're down a couple of staff as well at the moment, uh, Doctor Highsmith. Yes. The the working theory is that Harry well. Mind you, I'm not the police. This is this is the police speaking. Their working theory at the moment is that Harrywell somehow escaped his straitjacket, I think, and came upon this knife. How? I do not know. So, somehow he managed to murder Mr. Roby. And then that's where the speculation stops because we do not have, we do not have uh, more bodies. We have Harrywell, obviously. We have hmm. the body, which Graham says is not Alexander. Which, if that is the case, and if there is, like, as the police have informed us, and as we can all tell, because we are all learned individuals in this room, there is, there was far too much blood. Uh, again there no. and and if that there is there is probably someone is very wounded or or uh something to that effect and if the body is not alexander's he's he's just sort of like it, vomiting it, this it, like word it, salad out. Say, <laughs> calm, calm, calm down dr heisman i appreciate this that this has left you very distraught and it's a very trying time but uh now I'm no expert on this. This might be more your field of expertise, Olivier. But I gather that those uh, those straight jackets aren't terribly easy to get out of unaided. No, I I have a hunch that someone would have assisted in some way. Now, uh, Doctor Highsmith, can you think of any? As Olivier was saying, can you think of any any reason why someone might have taken uh, Mister Harrowell out of his? straight jacket is that something that would have happened in the normal course of things not not for any any reason that i can think of offhand obviously we do allow in the courtyard uh, exercise harrowell as we've discussed previously harrowell is a case of of such damage that he benefits from very little essentially what he is here for is he's biding his time until the end and we strive to make it as bearable for him with his damage as we can but uh, of course there's, there's no course. reason to take him out anywhere yes well, uh, now, uh, when you when you found the straight jacket was it intact had there been any cuts to it or any rips no it was opened just just opened as in just, the yeah the in, it, were no in. no damage to the jacket as far as i remember no, I, I don't know what you think, uh, Olivier, but I, I'm of the mind that uh, it might, if these two, for whatever reason, if these two staff members have gone missing, if they're injured, 
and they they've tried to get somewhere to get help or something along those lines or for whatever reason they've decided to leave the area it wouldn't be terribly difficult to to locate them and perhaps we could perhaps we could ask around at the the nearby train stations and uh, perhaps some of the villages hereabouts to uh, see if anyone has encountered them you know maybe uh, have a bit of an explore of the local area see if we can find any traces of them i mean if as dr highsmith said they may be injured they, they they may be lying in a ditch and requiring help or more than that if the body this is another working theory uh if the body is not alexander and my nurses were as they were somehow yes. caught in all of this and perhaps wounded perhaps gravely as you have said mm. there was substantial damage to alexander's and he pauses the body's facial features oh. and given that and the lack of uh, this distinctive scar tissue on the upper arm as per Graham's words uh, and here's where uh, I need to refer to my notes uh, where's the thing uh, here we go uh, we could speculate that perhaps the body that we have is indeed not Alexander, but uh, Thomas Clark, one of my nurses. Thomas was roughly that size, same hair color, with extensive enough damage to the face. Uh, uh, he sort of like trails off just like talking about like, uh, it's very clear that Highsmith ha hasn't really considered a reality where someone would <laughs> mutilate another person's face like that I'll, I'll pour him another drink out of my yeah. flask so i'll yeah, say yeah. Uh, uh, Th thaddeus i was um i was just saying to uh, olivier that perhaps we should uh canvas the local area and do a bit of a exploring of the local area see if we can find a hide nor hair of these two uh these two orderlies that have disappeared after all they may be injured well i can uh, if it did uh... Indeed, the body was Thomas Clark. I don't think we need to look for him. Well, no, but there was I, there I, was another orderly, obviously, old boy. I can, I can, and he reaches into his, uh, I suppose, like uh, the desk drawers, and like I can give you addresses if you want to go and look. We would very much like yes. that. Yes, yes. He, he takes a piece of paper out and he dips a fountain pen, starts writing addresses. I'm sorry if you talked about this while I was gone, but mm -hmm. did did he mention the missing orderly Michael Evans? Is that can he confirm if that is um, the other Evans, Mark? Yeah, Evans? yeah, it's yeah, it's it, there, there's only one Evans here. Okay. Yeah, uh, he he mentions that the newspaper got the name wrong. Okay. okay <laughs> it, cool. it is indeed. Mark Evans. Okay, but just so we have it confirmed, so that's cool. Yeah, yeah. And he speculates. Uh, he he's told you guys that it's one way to look at things. Like if the body is indeed not Alexander, as Graham says, it could be Thomas Alexander because the face was mutilated to such a degree that can't really tell. And they shared the sort of same general silhouette. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he he gives you the addresses. Well, I don't know about you, Thelius, but I think we should uh, we should investigate these addresses and generally, like I say, I, I, I'll um, I, I'll make a sketch of the the orderlies and we can we can sort of canvas the area, you know, like ask the train stations, uh, the local villages, etc. See if we can somehow piece together the movements of the the two orderlies. And uh, after all, if uh, if the body is not Alex Roby, then obviously I, I can do a sketch of him as well, for he may still be out there. God forbid. Good idea. Yes, I wouldn't mind a, a quick look at the cell again, uh, just to see if anything else has happened, or if um, if our patient can give us anything else about who this person was. If, uh, Highsmith just like waves uh, waves at you. Like, Please, you're my guest for the third time, and under such auspices, uh, I, I will. You will find, I believe, Mr. Price. 
uh, in the corridor. He should be able to help you get whatever you need. Th thank you. It's uh, very much appreciated. So I'm going to pour him like another stiff drink out of my flask and put that away. Then I'm going to take mm -hmm. out some of my like good tobacco and like just put like a pouch mm -hmm. of it next to his uh, yep. his drink he, and say, "We appreciate he, this. Thank you, doctor." Yep. He he nods in silence and like drags <laughs> drags the tobacco towards him. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's it's off to the cell then. I think. See yep. what uh, see what Olivier's conjuring eyes can see. Yep. So we. We cut into the cell wing. You're once again accompanied by this uh, armoire of a man, uh, Mr. Price. And um, uh, yeah, so he's he has the keys. So if you want to go into Roby's cell, you can. If you want to go into Harry Wall's cell, you can. Yeah, so I think I think I'll go into Harry Wall's cell first. Um, but before mm -hmm. I speak to Harry Wall, I want to check the um, the hole. Mm -hmm. See if the sticky tobacco has been removed yep. or anything else. Uh, it, it is still there. Still it's there. there. Yep. Okay. Um, in that case, yeah, I, I get down to Harrowell's lab level and um, mm -hmm. start asking him. Um, Can you tell me about when the Devil Man appeared again? Yes. Uh, so he is uh, very much restrained to his bed. <laughs> Ah, no. okay. He is uh, not moving anywhere, and uh, Price, I'm, in fact, stands before you now. I say I'm not bothered. Was at the door. I'm still, so I'm still he... keeping my walking cane handy because, like, we we don't know. Maybe he did get out of the the straight jacket. So if he suddenly like busts out of it and goes for a lunge, I'm gonna be ready with my stick to like. Yeah, oh. yeah. So Price is there to uh, provide security, uh, but as as I said, Harrywell is strapped to the bed. In a straight jacket too. So, um, let me get my notes here. So yeah, you um, ask about the Devil Man, and Harwell starts uh, immediately crying. It's not, um, it's not the kind of deep hysterics that he descended to last time, but um, he starts weeping, and um, he starts. It's it's sort of, uh, it's like a sad, uh, sad kind of emotion that you get from him uh, as he explains himself. So uh, he's, he's weeping uh, and he says, the devil took Alexander away. The devil told me before that I would be next, but the, the devil took poor Alexander. I heard the devil talking to Alexander and asking how long. <clears throat> and Alexander told the devil that he would need no more than a week before he starts to dream and and then someone was screaming and maybe it was Mr. Clark and the devil came to my cell and he was painted, painted in blood and covered in deep wounds. And he threw in one of his hands and leaned close and took off my jacket and he whispered, to, and this is where he gets like super manic uh, and just like leans up, strains mm -hmm. his uh, neck tendons, just like popping out as he strains against his binds and he uh, stares at you straight in the eyes very intently and says seven days for his work lucius and then five days for mine and uh, then he reverts back to his and sort of descends into a deep sadness and he starts just like openly weeping and kind of wailing in the bed did anybody else come in here during that time do you remember uh you address lucius i yeah. presume yeah. yeah uh he shakes his head and wails Okay. You've been you've been very helpful, Lucius. Thank you. And I, I sort of distract him with a little just a little, like a little trick, like something colorful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So his his eyes follow, but he he has trouble focusing on it and he's uh, all snotted up and he's drooling a bit as well. Uh he is uh, all over the place. I, th I think we very distraught uh, yeah, as I, you I sort of glance at price to say that I'm I'm done basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But Price nods, and he goes and like fixes up uh, Harold's pillows because he's all like Ugh! moving about in the bed. And so he fixes the pillows and like sort of tucks him in a bit, and uh, yeah, escorts you out. So, uh, any of you looking for? Uh, I don't know what you types call it, but you need a you need a butler. Or like a handyman, 
I, I take it you're thinking of alternate employment. It's looking like it's early retirement around here. Yeah, so I, I see, I see. Uh, I see where the wind is blowing. Well, I, I don't think we're in the market for a, um, for a, for a man servant at the moment, but if we, uh, if we hear of anyone, we, we should be sure to let you know. I can certainly understand you not wanting to linger around here. Maybe, actually. Oh, it's... I'm sorry, Thaddeus, I didn't realise you were planning on taking on staff. Sorry, old boy. Would you be willing to uh, relocate to London? <laughs> if you have room and board, I'll, I'll go to Spain or some other <laughs> far place. Well, it's certainly a little warmer in Spain. Maybe even Wales. And he gives you a smile. <laughs> I feel it would be in his place to warn you, though, um, that we are, because we're looking into this whole affair, um, and as we have seen, it, uh, it does get lethal. So you uh, might you mean... actually be putting yourself in more risk by being employed by one of us than if you just said, I'll take my stuff and get out of here. You see him being kind of doubtful. He doesn't voice it, though, but he's kind of like, mm, I don't think you know. <laughs> like he, he doesn't trust your assessment of what exactly would be lethal. Uh, but he says, well, <clears throat> but if you have no concerns about that, yes, then I could use uh, the lay. So am I to understand that there's bodies dropping here because you are visiting here? No, Is that it? we are visiting here because bodies were dropping here. But we and can't since... rule that out entirely. And since we are going towards danger, as opposed to fleeing from it. Yeah, I, I think that's that seals it, because I've been sitting here on top of whatever it is that drops these bodies, sir. And that's, as far as you tell me, that's not you. So no, I've, I've been here where the killing happens. Uh, so... I presume wherever you are, at least there is less of that. Well, well, I, t I tell you what, that is. If you're, a, if you're, I'm, I'm sorry, no surprise. Well, what, what is, what is your Christian name? F forgive me, terribly rude of me. <laughs> um, he, he says, <clears throat> well, it's, it's, it's actually been a while since anyone asked because we're all very professional here. It's Mister This, Mister That. Uh, it's Albert. He extends a hand. I'll shake his hand. I'll tell you what that is. If you're thinking of taking on uh, Mr. Price here, uh, how about I um, how about I pay him his uh, his first month's wage, and you can you can see me right later on, old boy. How does that sound? Well, it's actually thinking of the same thing. So yes. Ah, splendid. In which case, I'll uh, I'll reach in. I'll I'll take. I I'm afraid I don't know out of character what an appropriate mm -hmm. month's wage for a man servant would be, but I'll take out the requisite number of notes. Uh, I'll hand that to him. So obviously Th Thaddeus can give you all the rest of the details, where to report to, etc. But since you're now in our employ, uh, I would like, if Thaddeus doesn't mind, I would like uh, the first of your duties. Could you tell me everything you know about the the two nurses that have disappeared? Since, as I say, we are investigating this matter, and obviously an insider's point of view, so to speak, could be very helpful. Uh, let's see, Clark, uh, Country Boy, I think his family had a farm somewhere or other, and when they passed, he sold it, and, well, I suppose, I wasn't really close with Clark, so, but I, I think he's, uh, he's from the West Country, here about somewhere. Local boy, uh, pretty quiet, goes to church, doesn't drink. Mm, let's see. 
I mean, I, I do realize that that is pretty much like you just pick anyone uh, in a village around here, and that's that's this individual that I'm describing. But that, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, there's uh, Evans. Don't really know very much into. I think he wants. I think he's a failed doctor, really. Like he he wanted to be more than a nurse. I think is really into the professional side of things. Recluse. Don't really know. He lives in Lemonster, I think, and doesn't want fuck all to do with me. So, I mean, both of these very good to work with. Don't mind it, but there's there's no company there to be had. If you know what I mean. Well, we we appreciate you. Uh telling us um, nevertheless uh, now Thaddeus uh, since we're since you're taking on Albert as a as a manservant do, do you want us to to send him back to London you know we could give him the details of your housekeeper if she could get him settled in or, or do you want yes. him to come ah very well in which case I'll um, w- whilst I was still here I'll make the arrangements to like take Albert to the to, to Dr. Highsmith presumably okay. have to like sign out and yeah, like, yeah. give his yeah. resignation and whatever and I'll make arrangements to take him to the train station, give him some money for his train fare, give uh-huh. him the, you know, go to this property, speak to uh, the housekeeper. Yeah. Um, we'll get Thaddeus to do like a letter saying I'm taking this person as a man, so mm-hmm. you know, get him up to spec, give him room yep. and board, etc. I'll give him a bit, just a little bit of like spending money or whatever, mm-hmm. and then we'll sort of pack him off to London and send him on his way. Yep. Yep. So Mr. Price departs to. London and uh, what happens with you? It is rather late, uh, as I recall, from the travel distance, all the travel times that we've established. So what do you do? You head to Leominster or? Latest hour. I mean, is it like two miles away or are we talking 50 miles or? I'm actually going to have to reference because I, I did not look up Lemonster on that. Well, whilst you're looking that up, I'm going to say yeah. to the others, I, I don't know about you chaps, but uh, from what um, Albert has just said, this seems to uh, put uh, Evans more firmly in the frame as far as I'm concerned. After all, uh, we, we know that this devil man uh, cut himself with knives, uh, but didn't obviously didn't kill himself you know so that would in quite that would imply some sort of knowledge and if the, if this Evans is a failed doctor or someone who wanted to be a doctor yes mm-hmm. was it curie or atlas that was very interested uh, let me see. Uh, uh, Malcolm Corey is the one that you've consistently heard that is not even uh, in England anymore, or the UK. Uh, he has left. Okay, so I'll just quick scan. Also, it, it seems definitely confirmed that this body with the disfigured face is not Roby. Roby's been taken. Yes, it seems that way. Um, but I think, given that a uh, given that Evans comes from Leominster, that should certainly be our next port of call. Yes. Now, whether you you chaps want to go there this evening, or whether you want to get a good night's rest and head out first light in the morning, uh, entirely up to you. Well, one advantage to going now is because it's the middle of the night. If Evans is at his home, we will be able to catch him by surprise. He's not expecting the three of us to suddenly turn up. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Much like someone else we knew. <laughs> Somehow it was mentioned that they needed Ruby for some sort of ritual. Um, I think you're talking about Gresty's letters because he talks about what each of these individuals w- wanted or was doing. Mm, maybe, yeah. He's giving your his view, obviously, on the matter. Well, it seems clear to me from what um, from what uh, 
the unfortunate Mr. Harrowell told us that the, the devil man said to him that obviously Roby's, I mean, call them prophetic or whatever you wish, dreams are somehow involved in whatever whatever dark business these people are involved in. Uh, they're obviously waiting for him to dream of something or have a certain dream as some sort of signal that it's that it's the right time to start whatever it is they're doing. Well, I think the trigger might have been um, Mr. Roby's um, failure to get uh, out of here. Indeed, perhaps they were hoping that he would be released and they could simply collect him upon his release and go about their business. But when he was not released, that forced them to escalate their plans and arrange this whole thing. And obviously yes. the, the disfiguring of the, the unfortunate person who died was a clear attempt to make everyone think that Mr. Roby had passed so they could take him where they would and do whatever they will without anyone searching for him. Indeed. So, Laminster seems to be about 20 kilometers away from where we are. Huh. So that's... Uh, it's not out of the question. Like, if you wanted to, you could... Hour in the car, right? You could go there, uh, but ob obviously, like, you will need to sleep somewhere in the West Country, like, wherever that might be, but you're not making it home to London because there are no trains anymore. Oh, yeah. So, um, okay. Do we have a opportunity to, to borrow on a car? From yep. the asylum. Yeah, for sure. Um, so we could go there and come back here and uh, spend the night uh, if um, we have a car. Mm -hmm. I, I, yep. I think we definitely should. I mean, worst case scenario, there'll be there'll be somewhere we can h hire lodgings in in the village. I'm sure, even if it's just a, a small room at a, uh, at a pub or something like that. But uh, I, I I think uh, Olivier is right. We definitely should go there this evening. So, as you've been planning this stuff out, you've dealt with Mr. Price's departure and subsequent rehiring by yourselves. Um, is it fair to assume that you haven't exactly disguised what you're planning from Dr. Highsmith? Because he's been around, obviously. I don't think we would have disguised it. Cause he, he gave us the addresses for the for the two orderlies have gone missing. He knows we're investigating them. Yeah. We're trying to find out what's happened to them. So uh -huh. I don't see any reason to disguise it no. from him. Yeah. Yep. No. So um, he will mention as soon as he pieces it together that obviously like he knows he gave you the addresses. He presumes you're going to go. So he, he comes around and he says that he is informed because the police are obviously looking at these addresses. Like he's... He's let them know that there's uh, acquaintances uh, of his coming around, so the police won't think poorly of you in the case that they will have folks there on watch at the houses. Very good. Thank you, Mr. He Dr. Yeah. Highsmith. I think we're then just going to, like I said, borrow, uh, borrow an automobile and uh, yep. head over to Laminster. Mm. Yep. So... We drive throughout the darkening west country, oh, uh, through the way. deepest of the hillside thickets. Uh, a, uh, and we arrive in Leominster, which, uh, well, it's a very, very similar, simple affair because you have the exact addresses. So, where do you go? Well, got... You say that, but given how addresses are in the UK, I'm not sure it's as simple. <laughs> <laughs> but you're also from the UK, so you speak the language. Okay. Well, I think it's uh, I think obviously we should go to the address for Evans first. Yeah. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. certainly my my thoughts will be to have a look, see whether anyone's been there recently. Mm -hmm. you know, any signs of recent habitation or such like. Yeah. Right. So you you drive up to where the house is it's it's not a large place uh lemonster in general um i think it's probably on an outskirts area with some there's like a copse of trees around uh you come up uh there's obviously like there's more habitation around but not exactly next door um there is uh you can see this individual well before you even stop the car uh there's a policeman uh with a cap on uh, there's a lantern. He's sat there in a 
chair, just reading something and uh, puts the book away and uh, gets a gets a torch as you come up, stop the car and he waves at you, says, hello, would this be the Highsmith party? <laughs> yes. Indeed. <laughs> Very good. Uh, well, not good given the circumstances, but we have a watch here just in case anyone comes back. We want to talk to them. Uh, you're free to look inside. Dr. Highsmith assured me that your discretion is on the level. So just oh, don't, yes, of course. don't, um, well, I suppose don't rob the place. And he, he gives a little laugh because he's, he's, he's the police. Um, uh, yeah. So the door's unlocked, so you can go in. Yeah. There's no one in there. So. I, I think the idea is just, cause obviously the police, they, they don't know about this whole like occult angle. No. <laughs> that we're following that that's not even on their radar obviously no. so i think our main sort of idea is to go in and search around for anything that they might have just missed and like not even thought about it but mm -hmm. to us with our sort of knowledge of what's going on might have some significance yep indeed kiss yep. so you enter the house uh I think uh, the policeman gives you his torch. Uh, he says, "Yeah, the, there's no, there's no power inside. Don't know what's wrong with it, but um, much, much yeah. obliged. Thank you." Yep. So you can have the torch. Uh, he's outside with his lantern. He's he sits back down, starts reading his book, and you go in. You quickly confirm that the house is bare, save for the furnishings. It looks like an empty house not a place where people live um whichever conclusions you want to draw from that you're free to do so however you take stock of the place obviously um in like i said it's very bare there's no curtains there's no carpets it doesn't look like a place where you live however there's like there's the chairs there's the kitchen table some kitchen chairs and whatnot you go in the kitchen you look in the cupboards they're all empty um on the kitchen table, though, it looks like the police have taken some mail, like they've carried mail from the door. And um, you look, it's like I, I have like a Leminster standard or whatever, <laughs> a Leminster Herald, um, the local newspaper, a couple of issues of that. And uh, then there's a couple of letters which catch your eye. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're unopened. Uh, of course, the police wouldn't wouldn't disturb someone's privacy like that. Well, be, being being the general cat that I am, I have no such I mean, qualms. It's a crime to uh, the slightest read out of mail. So. Yeah. So you you check out these letters. Um, there are two of them. There's what seems to be as you uh, being caddish, uh, you <laughs> you get get the the first one open. Um, it's a uh, tailor's bill, seems like. Uh, so Evans has had some work done on like a suit, like fixed some jacket or something at a tailor. And the second uh, letter is indeed addressed to Montague Edwards. And it's from the uh, British museum and it's a it's an application a reminder for him to renew his reader's ticket so is it the uh, ceo uh, mark evans or no is it it's addressed to montague yeah it's but, addressed uh, to montague edwards and uh the taylor's bill is addressed to mark evans okay huh. well we finally know what his first name is Montague. Yep. So there is nothing mysterious as such with the contents of those letters. It's just the, the tailor's bill and then the reader's ticket reminder. Uh, okay. Well, hang on, hang on. So after you all, boy. He... <clears throat> it was his call, Montague Edwards, and his synonym was 
Mark Evert. Yep. M -E -M -E. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is, I know, fucks you up as a as mm -hmm. an individual, uh, <laughs> because we had uh, you last session calling Evans Edwards for a bit there. So. <laughs> I, I know it's a it's it's one of those things where you look at it in the book and go like, why? <laughs> why, <laughs> why would you do this? Well, at the risk of it, at the risk of sounding like I'm uh, I'm involved in some sort of dungeon crawl here, I'm going to uh, <laughs> take uh, a ten foot pole. No, 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 no. Uh, uh, I'm, 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 a, I'm a gentleman. I have a walking cane. I don't carry a pole or anything as commonplace as that. <laughs> I'm going because we know that obviously these people, assuming he's involved in this core business, we know that they're a fairly secretive lot. So. I'm I'm gonna go around and I'm just and I'll probably ask Olivier to help with this because Olivier is the 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 sort of stage magician. Just see if there's any like concealed areas or anywhere they might have hidden valuables or sort of stuff they didn't want other people to see. You know, yeah, but we're not gonna open the letter. Are we? Well, the letters we've already opened. Did we open the one for Montreal? Yes, yeah, but... it, yes, it's from the British Museum. It's a reminder to ah, renew yeah, his sorry, readers. Duh. Yep. Yeah, mine, yep. mine fat. Yep. Sorry. Yep. Yeah, no, Clinton opened both of them and concluded that this is a bill to Evans and this is a reminder for Edward. Yeah, I mean, I yep. just... Yep, no problem. So you go about the place. It's uh, kind of easy in, the, in that it's a very bare place. So you don't find a lot. Like you, you go knocking on things, like looking for hollow spaces and whatnot. You don't really find anything. However, in the bathroom, uh, there's it, the floor is wooden, and it feels kind of weak. The floor, as you step on it, it gives a bit. Why in the world would you have a wooden floor in the bathroom? Are there any um, any cracks in the, in the floor at all? So you, you go down uh, and you concluded first that it was built from some darker wood, perhaps, but it is in fact stained with something, you realize. And you like looking for, is there cracks on this? And you like putting your hands on it for a bit. It's, it it kind of gives a bit. It's a bit spongy and it smells coppery. Mm, there's a copper smell to this. Like someone has been bleeding profusely? Yes. Like extraordinary amounts of blood are you suggesting there's a body under here that is um it was slash evans came back um, when i tell you i tell you what um... covered, covered in blood and took a shower but yes let's stick it up yeah I, I'm, I'm gonna see if i can like jam my uh, my walking cane under it and like, lever it up yeah mm. it's no problem at all because the boards are just suffused with blood to such a degree that it's kind of turned them into mush uh so do you do there's the sort of like wet snap as <laughs> as you pry the boards uh there's nothing under there just the construction uh of the floor uh which there's i suppose there's some like coagulated disgusting like mush down there yeah. uh but um yeah, the, the boards are just... It, it, if you took a board and you soaked it in blood forever, well, thank, uh, this is what you would get. <laughs> thank the heaven for the small miracles of it being in the middle of the window. So, no I, I think we should definitely tell the, uh, the policeman outside about this. Uh, I mean, I'm sure they've seen the blood. I mean, I can always claim that I put my foot on it and my foot went through it. I'm just in... Right. So, so I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna call out to the policeman, and and uh, if he comes in, I say, uh, yep. I, I, I'm I'm dreadfully sorry. I know we promised not to twitch anything, but I, as I was walking across, my my foot went clean through that ball there. It seems like a, a I'm sure I'm sure aware that my uh, my colleague here is a medical professional. It seems a large amount of blood has weakened the uh, the board there, and there's a large amount of it collected under the board. Uh, we thought we should tell you. I'm dreadfully that's... sorry for the damage. Oh no, that's 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 yeah. Uh, wow. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you uh, for maybe not not for breaking the board, but for letting me know. I did not know. I'm only the night watchman. 
I will let the morning shift know. Uh, Thank you. You should probably go. Yes, I I think you're right. And again, I'm I'm terribly sorry about the damage. It's mm. like uh, I get paid for sitting here reading my book. This mm -hmm. ain't my this ain't my show. Yeah, he, this is out of, like <laughs> above his pay grade. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, he he looks at it like they're telling me that's blood. I don't want to look at it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So yeah, I think we should make our excuses and leave, and maybe try the other address. Yep. Is there is there any kind of cupboard in here for something like medicine or pills? Possibly, yeah. Uh, in well, I I wouldn't actually know where they would be situated in in like late twenties UK. Ooh, would, would it's that... always in the bedroom. Yeah, wherever that is, you find it. Uh, <laughs> so you you want to ransack it for meds? Well, potentially just have a have a quick glance while the officer isn't looking. Mm -hmm. Just see if there's anything weird and wonderful in there. Well, that's right. If, uh, if Olivier gives me the nod, I'll just stretch out the sort of like apologizing profusely for the damage yeah. and sort of distract him by chatting yeah. while you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you find it, it is as empty as everything else in this house. This house has been cleaned, except for the blood. And okay. you presume the letters were a, a bit of an accident. <laughs> that, that wasn't probably ah. supposed to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair dues. Yeah, so I think we're going to head to the um, the second address that Dr. Highsmith gave us. Yep. Uh, you find a rather distraught Mrs. Clark. And uh, what she tells you are two small children who are sleeping and you should not wake them. Yep, so uh, Mrs. Clark is uh, talking to you on like the at the door, really. Okay. So she she has no idea where Thomas is, and yeah. Hmm. Do do they look? Um, they don't look like someone who could afford a. Vacation house or anything like that. No, right? no, they uh, or at least get not great pay. Does she, does she seem genuine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She seems uh, just harried, overworked, worried, sick. Thomas seems, okay. uh, at least from Price's description, to be like your bog standard, uninteresting family man who goes to work, comes back, family time, dinner, ruffle the kids' hair go to sleep yeah uh saturday night maybe there's some action there but uh that's now, now. we on. don't we don't talk about that and oh, then we go steady to, on sir we're british then we go to church on sunday to feel bad about that mm. yep uh, -huh. uh okay. it, yeah it seems like she is just barely holding the pieces of the clark clark life together now without thomas speaking of the church mm -hmm. Um, is it, is it, what, what kind of denomination is it? Are we talking Protestant, Catholic? I think we're talking Anglican. Anglican, okay, yeah, yeah. makes sense. Cool. Yeah. And, um, I know it's the 4th of December, but what, what day is it? Mm, it Dennis, Christmas. do you have the thing? Let's see. Is it Tuesday? Okay. okay. Tuesday. So, nowhere near the time for churchiness. No, not yet. Okay. I do believe okay. traditional is on Sundays. Yeah. <sighs> God damn it. Um, that just feels a little pang of humanity and uh, leaves uh, Mrs. Clark with his uh, like that. Uh, damn it. My brain is not working today. That card with his name and telephone number. Yeah, the business yeah, card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> yeah. I think likewise. I'm, I'm also feeling a, you know, obviously that whatever happens is going to be a fairly rough time for this family. 
So um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna make some excuse like oh, when I was when I was last at St Agnes and I saw uh, and I saw Mr Clark he was he was kind enough to uh, to lend me some money since I'd quite forgotten my wallet and um, since I can't find him to pay it back uh, I, I believe I should give it to you and I'm like I'm like a ten pound note or something like that. Yeah, yeah, she gratefully takes it. Yeah, and if she willing to relocate to London um, and uh, might looking for some work. Um, she could uh, call upon me. Yeah, yeah, she definitely will take that. That's that's a thing for downtime, most assuredly, because if things turn out as bad as they seem, she probably doesn't have a lot here. So yes, work would be great. And I am collecting NPCs. <laughs> yes, for you my eventual sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> yep good times yep um uh, yeah she is grateful for your offers of assistance and your concrete assistance in the form of just money and um she is definitely going to uh take into consideration your offer of employment that's a little touch john though that he had borrowed Money. Well, well, I you don't, you don't have to go into it. Oh no, I can't accept it. Yeah, I, I, di I didn't want it to seem like oh, you know, I, I'm a big like rich person giving them a handout. So I'm like, oh well, if mm -hmm. because then they might be like, oh no, we can't. They've got they've got the pride; they can't accept the money. Whereas mm -hmm. if I say, oh, this is just like some money I've already borrowed off your husband. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That they nice touch. Yep. Yep. Good times. Good times. Okay. But had for none. But uh, we I go? suppose we leave her, um, and uh, of course feel saddened by her now uh, lack of Saturday action in the future. Yeah, that's the <laughs> Mr. Freud. That's the one thing that we feel sad about. <laughs> yeah, maybe I should. Uh, I mean, I am in the business, so I guess uh, he have a spare dildo somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it's just like Tupperware. Or right, they, 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 this they, session <laughs> turned quickly. Yeah, <laughs> they, they use this on a distraught woman in this age. It's a oof, wow. oof, medicine. Yeah. It's a it's a rough time. <laughs> it's a rough time to be a doctor. <laughs> so um, I, I presume we're we're leaving the uh, the Clark residence, yes. and um, then looking at how late it is, do we think we'd be able to get back to St Agnes before it gets like ridiculously late, or are we going to have to find a room here? I think you can probably get there, but it's going to be like super nice. Uh, but you, you can get there. Super nice. Super n mega nice. No, it's, it's going to be late and uh, well, let's probably... do that uh, as yeah. opposed to uh, though, although Thaddeus isn't happy about it because he has not had restful nights at St. Agnes. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I'd, 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 I'd hate to be resting in this quaint old village when we could be shacking up in the madhouse. Yeah, okay, well, if there's an... an you know of an empty in, house... Or... Yeah, okay, so is there a country inn where we can uh, rent a room? Uh, yeah, if you want to go into um, a, a quaint country uh, establishment, an inn perhaps, or a tavern. Do that and uh, have some uh, late, late uh, supper. Yeah. And, and obviously yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll chat That's to the locals same. and uh, if we can pick up any other sort of general chat about the two mm -hmm. households, we will do. Question for the Tentacle Master. What's the yes. weather conditions like? It is... Um, today hasn't been snowing a lot, but there is a coating of snow on almost like in, in every place you go. Um, mm -hmm. But today has been calm as far as weather goes in that okay. it's not windy or rainy. One thing I will do, I'll, I'll kind of chip in with, with Quentin's chatting as well and I'll start making a point about the weather hoping to get details of what it's been like the past few days because if it's been really like stormy and blizzardy then it's presumably will have, will have slown edwards down mm -hmm. uh yeah you know from uh, like if the weather in london is anything to go by it's been a rough week or so of weather just constant snow and sleet and uh, now it's stabilizing into the negatives so it's actually staying and everything is icy and everything's difficult really is what it boils okay. down to and uh, yeah it's been the same here as well you hear about uh, burst pipes uh, just frozen uh, everything <laughs> really is what the talk of, of the inn is 
So you get recommended uh, a lot of soups and uh, I think they probably have some like heated beer that they have, which is like, yeah, this is the one that we <laughs> drink now because fuck. <laughs> heated beer. Heated beer. Yes, think, think, think of it as like a down market version of mulled wine, chaps. <laughs> yeah. Let's take a cup of coffee. <laughs> it's It's not like the heights of culinary experience, but... <laughs> It's... Yeah, basically, I'm going. We get a bit of chat. If it's warm, it's fine, and then we can like get, yep. get some rest, hopefully, and come yeah. back here with fresh eyes in the morning. Yep. All righty then. So you have a good night's sleep in a roadhouse uh, in Herefordshire, somewhere. And um, yeah, it's it's. Uh, Thaddeus, it's the first good night's rest you've had in the West Country so far. <laughs> there are no dreams of slicing your own chest open and well, disemboweling yourself. I, I was going to say, actually, when we're sleeping, obviously I've been like practicing this like lucid dreaming, obviously with the aid of hypnosis originally. But I'm since we're, we're in fairly friendly surroundings, I'm going to have a go at sort of trying it without the hypnosis. Because I've, mm -hmm. I think I've probably got sort of like a rough idea of like how it works. You know, you calm yourself down, you get your breathing steady, you drift mm -hmm. off to sleep, you focus on what you want. And um, I've obviously already had a dream about this devil man, so I'm going to be trying to think about that as I'm going to sleep. Right. So I'm trying to avoid nightmares. You're trying to encourage them. Well, you see, the, the, the font of inspiration often goes to very dark places, that is, oh boy. I think you do you boo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Clinton does not dream about the devil man. Uh, instead, Clinton's dreams are about walking on uh, the shore of a lake in a pale morning mist, and is very peaceful. Oh, his lake! His lake fetish has reoccurred. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, assuming no one is uh, murdered. Or... No. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so at uh, breakfast, um, what I suppose we should uh, do now, it seems the trail has gotten cold, I believe they say. Mm. I mean, I think we can safely assume now that... Um, Mark Evans was at least connected to Monster Hugh Edwards. It Possibly certainly seems the so. Same name, being the same person. Well, perhaps we've perhaps we've been going about this all wrong. Perhaps we should have been looking into this other name, this uh, this Montague Edwards. Uh, maybe we'll find something more if we look into that name rather than Mark Evans. Well, it's based on the house. It seems it was just a rental, just to mm, keep up appearance that, yes, I live a place. Mm. I, I must admit, I'm, I'm a bit of a, a lost that is. Like I say, aside from trying to find out a bit more about this Montague Edwards, I'm uh, I'm not really sure where to go, to be honest, old boy. Well, it seems to, this is where we um, actually um, engage the good Mr. Tuck and his uh, investigative powers. His gin scented uh, <laughs> services? His, his, yeah, his uh, gin powered <laughs> services. Mm -hmm. Sponsored by Gorgon Gin. <laughs> sponsored by Beef Eater. Um, we're not sponsored by anyone. Uh, full disclaimer. Uh, other other right gins now. are available. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like Bombay Sapphire, if you know what I mean. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> if you don't want to, you know, outright poison yourself. <laughs> yeah, and so, if uh, you have a bathtub at home, I mean... <laughs> that that uh, gin advice aside. Yep. Yeah. Should we go uh, back to uh, London then and uh, hire Mr. Tuck? Well, it doesn't seem as though we're going to find anything else out here. No, I mm. wondered... You know, to see if they knew um, Mr. Ever, Ever, Evans, but um, 
I mean, I suppose we could spend a little time asking um, around here now where it's actually uh, time to get um, well, visitors again. But... There is one lead that we haven't thought of. What's that? British Library. Ah, oh, of course, yeah, for the reading ticket. Mm -hmm. Splendid idea. Yeah, which you already, you were aware of that kind of connection before when you were looking into... I don't actually remember where this came up before, boss. I think it was Tox, Tox report, right? Uh, Tox reported mm -hmm. that um, Roby moved fairly little outside of his house. And when he did, it he was more than work. likely with um, uh, Edwards. Yeah, he had some meetings there, if I yeah. recall. Yeah, Edwards uh, took Roby to the British Museum where Tox couldn't go because he doesn't have a reader's ticket. That's right. Such a cheap date. Okay, so so what say? I mean, I think Olivia's idea is an excellent one. What say we we head back to the city and we we see if we can find any more about? We we, we can still hire the the good the good Mister Talk to see if we can find anything about this Montague Edwards. But in the meantime, we can we can pay a visit to the British Library and see if we can find out what sort of things uh, Mister Edwards has been reading into. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, so I think we can, uh, and as always, uh, there's more stuff. Uh, if you don't have uh, things you want to get into, we can put in a couple of reading days and things will move on. But uh, we can fairly rapidly deal with both of these topics. So you hire Tuck, right? Yeah, he's, he's willing to work for you. Uh, he could use the money. So he's going to look into Edwards and you're going to go and see about this business with the British Museum. Mm -hmm. British Museum, I think it's non, like it's not a problem at all for several of you to obtain a reader's ticket. Uh, you might even have one. So uh, you can just go and do that. You, a reader's ticket is kind of like a library card. Yeah, it's, it's sort of like, yeah, you're permitted there to okay. do stuff because we can't allow the proles to have mm -hmm. access. Um, so Montague came by every now and then from what you can like manage to chat up from the, the uh, librarians. Okay, there. so we would really like to ask the librarians there if they uh, since it seems she was here quite a lot right uh not a lot but every now and then okay. well we'll try to show um uh, clinton's sketch of uh mark evans um, one with the, the glasses no. one with no, the that, that that's that's not uh so clinton how, did you create like a whole panoply of mm -hmm. these versions of of your sketches or well you know a, an artist's never truly satisfied with their work so yes i think i've rather a, I, i've rather adorned the pages of one of my sketchbook with a different studies of a mr evans or edwards he's sometimes now that's a lot of new studies for some reason so it seems like the the one librarian that you can get to talk who actually remembers something about this, uh, they identify Montague Edwards as they knew him as Evans with a full beard and mustache. That's the one that gets them, but Evans as you've seen him doesn't ring a bell with them at all. Are we able to get any um, get any sense of like what books he checked out? Uh, he read extensively in art history and some archaeological studies as well. He was really into um, domestic studies in that particular field. Uh, there was. As, he, as someone who's fairly sort of well up on the art world myself, is there anything that sort of jumps out at me, or does it just look like sort of general reading on the subject? Uh, it goes fairly deep, so it, it it's not it's like it's not one on one uh, is what I'm trying to get at. So it's fairly sort of deeper studies 
but it's not there's no unifying theme you can think of it seems like he liked to read that material he's a student of uh of the subject really and the the, the archaeology books he was reading were they focused on any particular part of the world or uh, yeah mostly he was he seems to be interested in local stuff so a whole bunch of stuff about the Hadrian's Wall, Roman time in Britain, that kind of thing. Uh -huh. And uh, also also uh, this. there's more on this topic, which you will momentarily hear from uh, Mr. Tuck as well. But yeah, he um, just British history and archaeology thereof. He seems to have checked out a lot of, well, sort of, I don't know what they call them, but uh, sort of the end products of, we had a dig in that field there. We dug up these pieces and now we're going to lay them out and sort of like tell people what these are and where they came from or speculate if we don't know. Okay, now so given, that, given, that, uh, given that Thaddeus has been reading that book on um, British gods... And obviously dealing with like ancient sort of folklore and stuff like that. And is there anything that might stick out to Thaddeus as sort of like British archaeology yeah, he's stuff that occurred in there? Sorry? I'm just saying he's under chapter of Hearn at the moment. I think British gods would have a bunch of references to the kind of books that Montague has been reading about, uh, reading rather here, checking them out. Well, it's all mythology and such, right? Yeah. Yeah. So there's a bunch of cross-referencing to be done with, they dug up this kind of relic from such and such site. And then in British gods, they would talk about that relic and what it means mythologically yeah. speaking. Okay, well, what's after we leave here, fellows? That um, we we have a couple of days or reading or whatever while we wait for Mister Tuck to give his report in, and then we see where we go from there. And obviously, that that'll give you time to get your new um, your new manservant settled in. That is. Good. Okay, so let's say a couple of days pass. So I will put the date. So the sixth then okay this is uh, Thursday okay, okay. So, so I was going to say so if, we, if we're reading our books for a couple of days I've got it that Olivier spent uh, seven days total reading the, the Golden Bow uh, Thaddeus has spent six days reading British Gods, and I've spent 13 days reading the Turner Codex. Splendid. Uh, I think, if I recall correctly, we're, we will soon be finished with some of those. So, um, on the sixth day, uh, Tuck. Uh, gives you a report of what he could scrounge up. So let's let's see what that is. <laughs> so uh, talk is, regardless of what your personal take might have been uh, regarding him, he is a pretty good fellow at his job. He's gone to fairly extensive lengths to try and figure out this Montague Edwards individual. And according to Tuck's findings, there's no employment records, no membership of a gentleman's club. He has published nothing as an academic or a contributor, uh, which already like that, uh, Tuck tells you that that's, that, that seems like a, there's something going on here. <laughs> like in his written report, he's made a note of like, 
all of this, the fact that he could find nothing about this man in these particular fields, that speaks to a nothing good, really. Um, then, yeah, he's been to the University College of London and he learned that a Montague A. H. Edwards was enrolled at the Slade School of Fine Art from 1905 to 1907. Montague H. Edwards. I'll put put it in chat. Montague A. H. Edwards. Indeed. Does it stand for aha, Edwards? Yep, yep. It's, it's literally <laughs> ah. <laughs> yep, so he was enrolled at the Slade School of Fine Art from 1905 to 1907. And uh, in 1907, he left at the age of 20 before receiving any qualification. Mm. So he's gone to the Slade School of Fine Arts and he's talked to the head of the institution a Dr. Randolph Schwab. Uh, this school is in central London. Um, so Dr. Schwab uh, seems has a, a great memory for things because Tux has learned that um, according to Dr. Schwab, Edwards was a very promising artist, fierce and uncompromising. He showed no real interest in exhibiting any of his works. Uh, And uh, Dr. Schwab thinks that regardless of this, if he would have, uh, he would have, um, if he had completed his studies, he would have gained a degree, most surely, from this this school, if he hadn't dropped out uh, shortly before final exams. So it wasn't for lack of... uh talent or skill. No, no, he, he is, he, according to the doctor's uh, estimation, the head of the institution, he was a talented young fellow, but he dropped out and he would have most certainly graduated because uh, he was good at what he, he did. A but reason why he dropped out. No, he left without notification and uh, regardless of the efforts of the Slade School of Fine Arts, uh, they couldn't contact him after that. Uh, So the doctor further mentions that uh, Edwards was quite protective of his privacy, which is probably apparent to you (laughs) by this point as well. Um, And uh, the doctor remembers that uh, he and Edwards had a sort of a connection outside of the subject of art uh, because the doctor had a friend on the faculty at the University College who used to be uh, doing uh, who used to do these archaeological digs in the summer, and um, the doctor used to join him as a sort of a holiday outing uh, during the summer when there's no teaching uh, as such. And um, Edwards was apparently very interested in this, and Edwards asked uh, Dr. Schwab to show him, show him some slides of the digs, and they talked extensively about the digs. And uh, Dr. Schwab went on a dig at one Springer Mound uh, back in 1907. And they were looking for Saxon artifacts on on that hill. And uh, Sorry, when did you say he he went on the dig? 1907. And um, Edwards uh, had seen those slides as well. And uh, Did, Did you say Springer Mound? Yes, Mm -hmm. Springer Mound. What was that place called uh, with the farmer that died? Springer Springer Mound. Mound. Yes, we've most definitely been there. Yep. You almost stayed there for good. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I I feel like there's some part of me that's still lovingly splattered around the area. Yep. (laughs) Um, There's no... uh, address that the school has because they only had his dorm address and that is not relevant at all anymore. So it appears that Edwards was enrolled there, but he just completely dropped out of the map. He has no working record. He's nowhere. 
on anyone's books. To suppose this is a fake name as well. I suppose it's possible. So yeah, that is what you learn. Um, it, it gives you some more context, but it definitely seems like whoever this individual is, if their name well, is Montague Edwards or not, they... So question, question yeah. since Thaddeus went to all these fancy fancy schools and uh, mm -hmm. they cost money, right? Yeah, they do. So when you enroll, they make a note of um, like, I guess if in some cases the parents or whoever pays the the bills and all that, mm -hmm. should we look into that? Go if to you... since it's in London, we could go to the school and ask this uh, this um, slab. Was a slab? His name was the professor. Uh, Schwab, Schwab, the, the head of the institute. Yeah, another idea I had was to see if we can track down any of his friends from university. No, we tried that. <clears throat> yeah, he, he has now we know. <laughs> Yeah, he has not. Okay. Yeah, well, he he did have some friends, one of which you killed. Uh... <laughs> I was hoping his circle would be a little yeah. bit bigger than just them, <laughs> but obviously not. Uh, yeah, yeah. There, there's n absolutely no friends that you could you could discover. Okay. He was a recluse. But even uh, a recluse has yeah. parents, or at least had. Yeah, parents. yeah. So, so I, I think it's fairly because you've looked him up so well now by yourselves in different points of time and now talk as well uh, you can determine that he paid for the school himself did he he forked over have, the money okay do they have any like uh, you know like uh, the newsplay uh, newspaper article mentioned the orderlies um, they were of uh, lemon minister so did did they have like uh, it was of canterbury or something like that <laughs> Uh, I, I'm not sure what you're asking. <laughs> yeah. Did they have his uh, like his uh, no um, where he's from? Uh no. In, in the admission papers. Uh no, I I don't think so. Okay. I I think Thaddeus, it might be time for you to try and arrange a meeting with a uh, Gresty. How do you expect me to do that? Well, uh, if I remember correctly, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, there were your letters, but didn't Gresty say that they would make, try and make contact with you? Well, there was no um, address, reply address, right? Yeah, there's, there's absolutely no address on either letter. So, yes, unless he makes contact again, but other than that, I... How, how about, and I, I've heard this in... Uh, stories and the like uh, how about if you took out a uh, an advert in one of the uh, one of the papers some sort of veiled reference to wanting a meeting with uh, this grasty since they seem to be they seem to be keeping track of you but what do you say to that that is i do like the theater of it so yes I mean, it may, it may come to nothing, but if if so, then all it's cost us is the price of placing a, placing a small advert in the, the local newspaper. Indeed, we should do that. <clears throat> okay, so you're you're fishing for Gresty via newspaper? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I mean, I don't know how we would word it, but... Um, uh, are you in a cult? Seek help, Dr. Thaddeus Morgan. <laughs> okay, well, we can I guess just it could just that... be like a, um, T. Morgan looking to uh, hook up. We, we who sits himself with old friends, uh, W. Gresty, or something weird like that, <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we can just presume that you you make the thing uh, like you would think best, yeah. and we'll just go with that. Okay, so it's gonna.
it's, it's going to take a bit. More reading time. Splendid. Yeah. Okay. So I think if it's okay with you, I'm going to say let's jump forward two days uh, to give the paper time to put out your catfishing. Two days. That makes it uh, actually the eighth. Yeah, it is indeed Saturday. That is. Oh yeah. One up. One up. Bonus. Yeah. Yeah. All so, right. So another, another two days of reading. Yeah, I think it's time for us to check on those. Honestly. Oh, boom, I've spent uh, 15 days reading the Turner Codex. I'm turning yeah. up. <laughs> You're all turned up? That's it. As the kids say. Get turned. Get real turned. Yep. Turn down for what? Look on the bright side, though. By the time we actually do meet Gresty, we're all going to be sorcerers. <laughs> yeah, you'll, you'll all be like, yes, I know. <laughs> I have seen the yellow sign. To me, it beckons. <laughs> so by that time, I mean we might as well just summon the uh, Hester ourselves, get it over with. Yeah, I mean you guys were pretty slow, so I mean, we would just went ahead and summon him. So you're yeah. saying that, that's how the game's going to end? Like, I think you're a cult for sure. That's really dumb. <laughs> so how many how days? <laughs> We, you know what? Yeah, let's make our own cult instead. <laughs> Let let's them try to stop us. <laughs> okay, so we've got Olivia's been reading the Golden Bough for eight days. Okay, let me check that then. Uh, I have several different sources for these. So. The Golden Bough. Sorry, nine days. Nine. Nine. It's it's not the German edition. Oh. Okay. Oh, that was the war in the lake. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Der Wander durch den See. Where is it? There it is. Hmm. 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 Okay. Let me just check another source. <laughs> it's interesting that you have such a discrepancy between like what information is included for each. Oh, I wonder, yeah, it might that, be that here. is why you get insanity from reading these books. Yeah, yeah, because you have to cross reference. I know. Like, I'm doing the thing now. <laughs> yeah, it's like ah, this contradict what I read in another. Ah, yeah. Now and I have to like, look up uh, like the forums and the rata. And, uh. Yeah, and then you find something from 2006, which is again like a third option. And yeah. like, what? <laughs> what? Just someone like riding in a straight jacket. Like there wasn't even an index. No index. <laughs> <laughs> 5.6.1! Ah! It was like I was reading a 90s White Wolf book all over again! I, I mean, I do think I, I taken some sanity damage from uh, trying to find anything in the World of Darkness books. Can be a bad time. Okay, here we go. It's just like, would it hurt you to make an index? And please, no flowery language for names of chapters, please. The Golden Bow. Of course, why would you put the time there? That's That would be far too useful. Sanity loss. Yeah, I'm going to be at St. Agnes soon. Well, well, at least if that's the case, we'll be visiting you on an almost regular basis. If I'm... I mean, I surely <laughs> hope uh, Monday Finland has a better mental health care than that. <laughs> mm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, like I'm... A strong dose of Logan Breeze. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That cures everything. Yep. Two doses before bed. <laughs> okay, so I'm fairly sure that I previously, I did look this up or make a call on it, but uh, I cannot find uh, what I based it on if I did. So I'm just going to say it's done. Because... <laughs> Hooray. Yeah. Okay, so the Golden Bough uh, is a study in comparative religion, as we know. Uh, it is in English. It is by Sir George Fraser. And the original is from 19, uh, sorry, 1890. It comes in two volumes. Uh, and let's see. Do, 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 do. Oh yeah, there's uh, there's different sections such as the magic art, taboo, and the perils of the soul, the dying god, Adonis, Attis, and Osiris, uh, spirit of the corn and the wild, the scapegoat, Balder, the beautiful, and such and such. It's this is not uh, magic as such; is a study of like magical thinking, basically, and religion. Okay. So. Uh, da -da -da -da. So it is a classic work of anthropology uh, exploring the evolution of magical, religious, and scientific thought. And you've learned quite a bit about it. Uh, you you can make a sanity roll. I think that's the case if I have to make a sanity roll. Uh, yep. Okay. Not quite. I will say it's not a mythos tome as such, so... Uh, the it's not going to be a massive, but I, with a failure, it is. Unless I spend five. Lots. Yeah, you lose one sanity point. Oh, okay. For comprehending so much, however, as a result, you can add five percentiles to your occult and Whoop. anthropology. Whoop. Yep. It is quite a thick. Thick book. Okay, so the golden bow is done. Uh, who's next, Clinton? Okay, so we've got Morgan reading British Gods. Okay, British We're reading Gods that for I... eight days. Eight days. Okay, that's not quite yet done. Okay. Uh, however, uh, you can, okay, that is because it's a thick academic text. Uh, but uh, you can tell that it is, it is indeed not a mythos book as such. There's no spells in it but there's okay. information mm -hmm. well, i think he kind of feels a relief not finding any spells yeah. in it. <laughs> there's like no potion recipes no pentagram drawing lessons mm -hmm. yeah it's a it's a like a scientific thing uh yeah. anthropology really okay. as, as well uh okay so you're working on that still you need to put in what was it eight days yeah, eight days. Okay, so you need to put six more days in it, and then you're fine. Okay, Clinton, who's next? And oh, uh, the Turner, Turner Codex. Is yes, it? I've been reading the Turner Codex for fifteen days. Turner Codex. Wherefore art thou? Where is the murder chapter? Oh, here we go. Mm -hmm. Oof. Yeah, that's three weeks of study. Mm. So you've already had the halfway thing because you learned those spells and whatnot last time. So when you complete the three weeks, you'll get the rest of that. So I need another six days effectively? Yep. Okay, cool. Yep. Okay. Yay. Uh, Olivier, do you want to put a book uh, up as your next? Board? Yes. Can you remind me what we've got left out of the okay. massive lexicon we acquired? <laughs> Let me consult my list. Okay, so we have The Wanderer Durst and Z, The Walker by the Lake. Mm -hmm. We have the English translation of The King in Yellow. We have Principles of Nature, Her Divine Revelations, and A Voice to Mankind. The Witch Cult in Western Europe, 
uh, you've read along tour we have all fall down and that's it I might go with the uh, the one about witches the witch cult in western Europe yeah give me some more occult stuff yeah, somewhere good uh, bedtime reading yeah oh yeah <laughs> So I'm just going to look this up beforehand so we can just track it. Uh, oh, well, yeah, I don't know what I'm, why I'm looking it up because I know that it's not going to tell me anything. So fuck that. <laughs> Takes until the next full moon to finish. Oh, is it in here? I've looked at four books now to determine <laughs> these times. You need to make a library use roll. Yeah, I, and I'm failing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to look this up one more time so we can close this out. Where are the books? Here we go. Yeah. Why would you have the times? Why would you? Oh, here we go. Do we? No, it's... Huh. Do they just presume that ordinary books you can just read uh, in just a, just a couple of days? Oh, here we go. Uh, yeah, sorry about this. It's not entirely entirely uh, relevant, but we're here now. Okay. In for a pin, in for a pound. Yeah, I mean it's it's the um, what do you call it? I've invested too much now that it seems like a dumb thing to quit. Even though it's it's entirely not true. Okay, yep. so I, I have satisfied myself in that there actually is no listed. That time is also what he told him. Some, some yeah, the the keeper said... the keeper should assign the relative interval he or she deems appropriate. Two d six weeks. Go fuck yourself, Call of Cthulhu. Go fuck yourself. Okay. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Campaign terminated. This is, this is why I don't usually use these mechanics. Hasta la vista, mythos. <laughs> yep. No, that's that's dumb. That's dumb. Make a call or don't. Don't make half calls. Uh, this isn't useful at all. So. Uh, okay, so we have the books read, and uh, we spent quite a lot of time on that. Um, right, okay, so I'm going to slam down some handouts. Oh. My body is ready. Yeah. Let's see. And yet I fear my mind may not be. <laughs> <laughs> I think at some point I should be to Thaddeus. I should be like, hey, Thaddeus, do you know what we've not done for a long time? Go to the theatre. Mm. Yeah. No. Yep. A ni nice <clears throat> evening of uh, good food, theatre, yeah. lots of cooking. What was that last part, Thaddeus? N nice food, theatre? No, 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 the, the, the other bit. Uh, good, good food? No, 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 no. Oh, uh, co cocaine. <laughs> I have a yeah. sweet tooth. Is it snowing, Thaddeus? Yeah. <laughs> oh, fucking Dr. Tony Montana over there. Yep. Uh, there was someone at the university in, uh, in real life. They uh, decided because, you know, you were spending so much time in your little uh, study room with your group. <clears throat> and um, and uh, 
reading and writing and discussing and all that. So this other group, they uh, decided that uh, coffee gives uh, energy, Red Bull gives energy. Let's make coffee, but instead of water, we'll use Red Bull, resulting in a destroyed coffee maker. Okay, so wow. I think uh, it's going to be a case of, do you have some crazy um, club parties on Saturday, Sadius? Yeah, Saturday is the Sabbath. So you're uh, uh, like on Springer Mound, naked? <laughs> Just like sky. punching stone columns. <laughs> no, but uh, it's at the Hellfire Club where they have the Sabbath. Right, okay. Do, do you bring along Clinton and Olivier? No, he's kind of turned off a little with all this. Like it was interesting before, you know, to to kind of like flirt a little with the cult, but mm -hmm. he's not sure he's really into it that much. Yeah, now now you you've seen the real side of it. Yeah, so <laughs> I think he's gonna you know skip a meeting or two. That is has delved too deep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so. Shall we presume that, given it's the weekend, uh, it's it's a night of like let's get together, let's eat something, pound back a lot of wine, and uh, talk about the stuff that we're going through. Yeah, I mean, how much money can Clinton spend without actually, you know, spending money? Uh, quite a lot. <laughs> we spend that on uh, blow and hookers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, straight to the hookers. I mean, I did say blow first. I'd, I'd probably also like to um, just check up how um, Mr. Estes is doing and, you know, the people who are involved in the the, the original play. You know, because obviously it's been a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good idea. Yeah, so, let's, so uh, like... let's uh, make a social call to Mr. Estes. Because I've been pretty much sort of going around a lot and, like, checking up on his, like, yeah. his copy of The King of Yellow. We, we, we did say we wanted to uh, uh, entertain the, his... Uh, his um, uh, it's, yeah, it's company. Why, why don't we have so, them over for like a nice little uh, nice spot of a light repast? Well, let's mm -hmm. not do that, but instead, let's uh, take them out to eat somewhere. Uh, yeah. I, I, as you wish, uh, if, if you're paying Thaddeus, that's very kind of you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I mean, uh, Mrs. Henderson is off on Saturday, so I mean, uh, I don't think uh, Thaddeus' cooking skills are. Like here's some oatmeal. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Uh, so if that's yeah, they they are delighted to come. You learn that, um, sort of propelled by Clinton's involvement, there are certain talks ongoing for when this diabolical weather lets up. Um, uh, and they have another season of theater. There's some talk about maybe having a play on where uh, the actors could put on something, a production. But they don't have anything yet, and the weather is uh, cold enough to actually like deter people from going about all that much. So in your restaurant, there's probably not that many people in attendance anyway. Hmm. But yeah, they, um, Clinton's involvement has been helping uh, because he has money and uh, a weighty name in those circles. But they don't have anything yet. However, there's um, like Estes has been, <laughs> it appears, like digging into his war chest and uh, he's been trying to keep everyone on, so to speak, um, giving everyone some advance money hoping of course that there's going to be a play in the future if i can um without sort of taxing my uh, resources if i can like sub him a bit you know keep him going i will do mm -hmm. yeah yeah for sure you can make arrangements yeah. uh with that in mind so i think you probably have like one of the most decent times in recent times uh, just having a nice dinner with nice people. Oh, <laughs> no, dear. no one's no no one's covered in blood. There's no 
blood sucking vampires. <laughs> oh, decent oh, times. How disappointing. I was hoping to dabble in a bit of good old fashioned scandal and debauchery. But, uh... Question What are you supposed to give us a load of handouts? Yeah, which is um, uh, because of this dinner plan interjected. Uh, he's, he's been I'm... distracted by Clinton's debauchery. It has been known to happen. <laughs> That's why yeah. I'm just reminding you. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, I'm I'm looking at the morning of the ninth now because <laughs> because of this event, which honestly, it's it's one of the better times you've had uh, in recent weeks. Uh, you have a bunch of like amateur entertainers, and everyone's in good spirits. The wine flows, etc. Everyone's looking to have a good time. No one is a sorcerer or a vampire. How's the um? I f I'm sorry, Except us. I forget a name. Yeah. The um, the young lady whose father was someone quite important. Well, let me check. That would have been John Hewitt, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Young woman, pale with freckles, uh, long red hair. Joan Hewitt, yeah. Yeah, yeah. How's she going on? Because she was a little bit concerned when last I spoke to her. Cause I, I floated the idea, oh, she'd ever considered doing some like artist modelling, and she was like, oh, I'm not sure my father would approve. Yeah, oh. yeah, because my father is the Lord Chief Justice. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, shit. So how's uh, she getting on at the minute? Uh, she's doing fine. She's doing fine. Obviously, like, family has a, a lot. They're not going to run out of money anytime soon. So she's doing fine, and she... Because you have time to talk... Uh, yeah, I'd, 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 like, I'd like to get a bit closer to um, Miss Hewitt. She seems like a, a decent, upstanding woman. Yep. So nothing, she... nothing I couldn't sort out given enough time. But uh... yeah, I mean, you you could loan her some books for a start. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, she um, she lets you know that she has been trying to help wherever she can. Obviously, she has a lot of money, so. She's been pitching in with uh, sort of let's let's keep the group moving, uh, even though we don't have a production going at the minute. Well, well, obviously, as part of my effort to ingratiate, well, continued efforts to ingratiate myself with her, I'll obviously accidentally when I, you know when I've had a couple of drinks, I'll uh, I'll let it slip that yeah, I've also uh, I've also provided some money to um, Mr. Estes, you know, because I I believe in what the the company is doing, and I think it's very important. And I'll say that you know, if she ever needs, if she ever needs any assistance, whether that be money or just someone to talk to, because I understand it must be very yeah. stressful. She she knows where my studio is. And my door is always open. Yep, yep. She uh, so asking if she needs a sugar daddy. I suppose more like it, if you need a a shoulder. <laughs> hey, don't, don't get me wrong. If I given that sort of like ma marriages of convenience are. Or all the thing, and she comes from like a very influential family. If I can ingratiate myself that well, I'm not saying it's off the cards, but at the minute, I'm just saying, you know, if you need someone to talk to, you need a bit of help, let me know. Because genuinely, yeah. I, I do believe that their play deserves to be seen by other people, given the the, the startling effect it had compared to some of the jaded tripe that they're trotting out nowadays. Yeah, well, Tedos doesn't really agree with that, given all we learned, but. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, uh, she certainly seems to, Miss Hewart seems to be hoping for that as well. Um, and uh, she, well, you, you talked with her at length previously. So, yeah, she gets on mightily with Clinton. And I think there's a, a whole bunch of laughs to be had uh, over the evening as you discuss various things. Uh, she is very knowledgeable uh, about, on the surface level, of about almost anything to do with art because she's doing that dilettante thing where you just faff about in galleries and. Well, indeed, I'll um, obviously I'm fairly knowledgeable about art, being an actual artist and having like studied into it and whatever. So you know, I'll I'll be quite happy to engage her in conversation about that. You know, because I'm like, oh, if she's interested. Maybe I can like deepen her knowledge of like the arts and whatever, and you know, I always appreciate the opportunity to pontificate about uh, my favourite mm -hmm. subject. Well, my second favourite subject, if you discount myself, obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. 
I think a grand old time is had by everyone at the soiree and uh, yeah, we can hop on to the ninth unless anyone wants to do something very specific and nefarious in the night. No, I'm good. Yep. Okay. So here we go. Just updating the old calendar so I know where I, we are. Okay, so it is the day after and I think it's a slow late morning <laughs> and uh whoever's up first you can choose amongst yourselves who's up so first it's a slow late morning apart from thaddeus who's like woo yeah, like, sunday I, ne <laughs> I never went to sleep woo <laughs> I, I probably won't be the first person up because I'll have probably drunk too much, smoked a great yeah. deal. I've been talking the, the wee, <laughs> the wee small hours of the morning, so I'll probably be like waking up bleary eyed, sort of like later on. I mean, I, I would imagine what, it's the usual. In the we'll, we'll get up. Um, yeah, I, either either you're up or not, and Olivier kind of comes round. He's used to drinking wine anyway, so he just gets his black coffee on as usual, and about eight o'clock. Yep. That is enjoys uh, getting up uh, early on Sundays and enjoying a uh, breakfast while everyone is going to church. Yes, just watching the sheep go to pasture. <laughs> oh, look at them. <laughs> How quaint. <laughs> look at them with their barbaric beliefs in the supernatural. <laughs> yes. And their complete lack of drugs. Not like us, the <laughs> true believers of history. I even hear they water the wine down. <laughs> Sacrilege. Okay, so uh, two things. You will get a visitor. It's just a, just a courier bringing in a letter to... Ooh, I think it's Thaddeus again, because Thaddeus, you... You spread your cards around uh, with gusto. So there's a letter that arrives from uh, one Delia Hartston, addressed to Dr. Morgan. And um, there is your, I'm just going to call it that they distribute this on Sundays out of just complete trolling. Um, your issue of the Occult magazine arrives as well, that is. <laughs> I think I think they they're they're the sort of people who would have a sense of humor about this. So um, early Sunday morning, uh, the occult magazine gets distributed, and well, you have that's, yours. That's what he's reading on the Sundays. Yeah, yeah Sunday Sunday reading. Uh, so where is Thaddeus? Thaddeus, here you go. There is one thing that catches your eye uh, more than others. So, Dennis, we do. Yeah, uh, you should have a new handout at the bottom of your list. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, is it the bacon? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Lawrence Bacon's got an obituary in the occult magazine of all places. Hmm. <laughs> huh. So uh, I can read it out. I can obviously give it to you guys as well, but uh, I can uh, read it. So, Mr. Lawrence Bacon, 1869 to 1926. Lawrence Bacon, a resident of Holloway, North London, died a few weeks ago. Mr. Bacon had been a dealer in such rare books as tended to address the occult, philosophy, theology, and religion. And you, the reader, may have had dealings with him at his place of business on the Liverpool Road, despite the tendency of the seller to observe rigorous entry conditions. Mr. Bacon had been a sometime acquaintance of ours. In fact, we used to belong to the same London club, where he was quite inseparable from another, perhaps more intriguing member, Montague Edwards, 
known to a few of us here as the Laird of Mullardock. Mr. Ba ba Mr. Bacon's death was a violent one and is as yet unexplained. Signed, Per Durabo. What is a Laird? A Laird? Uh, it's a Scottish. It, it's a yeah. Scottish title of nobility. So it's a, it's the Scottish word for Lord. Uh, well, like a very minor landowning okay. type individual, of huh. who I am one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the prerequisite is, as I understand it, you need to own some land there, and then you could be a lad. Did you say you were a lad? Of yes, Scotland? yes, I have some land in Scotland. <laughs> you? Yeah, Johannes. me, yes. <laughs> I am a, technically a Scottish noble of a very dubious. All right, thanks for gaming. Character. We need to talk about <laughs> this. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> okay, you threw me off now. <laughs> um, I show um, the, he shows this uh, article, um, this uh, book, yeah. uh, the up up. Yeah. <laughs> he shows the thing he may do to uh, his uh, friends sitting next to him. Yeah, I'm I'm putting it into everyone's mm -hmm. uh, pile of stuff. Olivier breathes a sigh of relief when it confirms that the death is still inexplicable. Yep. Or unexplained. But also, he's still dead. For now. As the song tells us, vampires are alive. <laughs> the legends <laughs> have to survive. Yeah, they do. They do. Oh, my God. I forgot all about that song. <laughs> oh, my God. Just don't think about the horse. Oh, God. Uh... Yep, so there is that. And then there is the letter. Thaddeus? Or rather, it's, it's not a letter as such. It's, it, is, it seems to be a note that has been forwarded to you, Thaddeus, uh, with a very brief um, uh, sort of explanation that, like, regarding your interest in these matters, I forward this to you. Signed, Delia Hartson. So I'm going to put that in your handouts as well. Dennis, Dennis. Okay. Should be there now. Hmm. Interesting, he says, and uh, gives it uh, to Olivia. Yeah, I'm going to include it to you in Roll20 as well, but uh, as far as now, I'm just going to read it. So it says, Delia. I am going to Scotland to Edward's house on Loch Mollardock. Please meet me there as soon as you possibly can. Things will move very quickly now. You will see that I was not chasing the devil. Signed, Alexander. What date was that letter? Uh, it was, let me go into my thing. Where's the no, no, don't do that. No. Um, yeah, I suppose Delia would have put down some notes on, on the dates there, or you could see the original thing. So it appears to originally have been, it, it kind of followed the same route you did to reach Delia. So it seems Alexander posted it to uh, Delia's mother's house on the 1st of December. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Delia got it uh, on uh, the 7th and then forwarded it to you. 
Okay. That is. So Roby's in Scotland. Would seem most so. likely also Edwards. Yes. And maybe Gresty as well. And now things are moving very quickly. I suppose I'd better get... this. I'm sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, I suppose I should get Clinton up. Uh, yeah, Clinton's in the <laughs> in his room. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I I just get him up and say, Clinton, we might be going to Scotland today. <laughs> what? What? Oh, this is a bit heavier night than I thought. I... Oh God, shut that, shut that curtain, man. I... I could have, if I didn't know better, I, oh, thank you, I, I could have swore you said we were, we were going to Scotland. Quite possibly, yes. God, what, why on earth would we be going to Scotland? Because that's where Roby is right now, with Edwards. What? Mm-hmm. We got oh. a letter from uh, Delia. Well, to Delia forwarded to us. Oh, hold on a second, let me just, uh, let me just get my clothes on and... Uh... Oh. Right. Oh, it's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll go back. I've got there. nothing I'm ashamed of. Don't worry about it. Maybe uh, you should be ashamed. I would definitely have that looked at. I'll do that, Yeah, Olivia, just <laughs> scarf us back down. I, I'll come like, walking down, so I'll pull, pull it, pull in my jacket on, and I'll be like, that is, what, what's all this business about us going to Scotland? Hmm? I said oh, we yeah. might be. Dear gods, man, I feel like I've been run over by a, by a car. You did um, go a little heavy on the, the whole... Well, yeah. well yes, I was uh, I was up until, until late talking to um, Miss Hewitt about uh, art and such. A delightful woman. I'm sure. <clears throat> Do you think this would... Uh... No, it probably wouldn't be evidence that uh, Alexander Roby is still alive. Well, well, I suppose we should be going to Scotland. How do you feel? Do you need a uh, pick me up? <laughs> it rolls out the. Well, I. <laughs> fucking... well, well, I believe if you'll uh, if you'll recall my previous statement where I said I feel like I've been run over by a car, that should uh, adequately convey. Oh, oh, is is that coffee on? I mean, we could do a blood transfusion. Oh God, I don't feel that bad, man. Get the sheep in. Let me just have a let me just have a a pipe and a bit more of this this coffee, and it'll be fine. Ignore the slightly demented sounding laughter you'll hear. That will be my lovely wife downstairs. It would have been, I think pretty cool to just move on and let's just not mention it <laughs> suddenly just yeah the sound effects <laughs> the sound effects to our deteriorating sanity <laughs> uh, yes yep. um well uh, there's a a note from um alexander to dahlia which he had forwarded to uh, me is this um, is this after the time he's supposed to have died, or? Yes, it is. It is the next day, and also um, the thing I do again for some reason say right now, the death notice, the obituary. Uh, yeah. Um, and there's a peculiar word at the bottom. Maybe you recognize it. And he points at the Peru. Perdurable. I, I, um, I'm assuming it doesn't mean anything to me. Anyone who wants can roll me an occult. Oh yeah. Because it's the occult magazine. That that is in fact the skill to read this magazine. It's a very mm -hmm. specific skill. Roll twenty. Oh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a new occultist. No. Okay. And, unless it's mythos related. <laughs> uh, does anyone have Latin? I do. You can roll Latin as well. Whee. I am. Much oh yeah, you that. succeed. Yeah, so you know what it means. It means I will last through. Oh. 
per durabo. I will last through. Oh, he mentioned that to his uh, fellow students of the occult. Yep. Oh well, um... Um... Oh, that, and I suppose you'd be a... You'd be a pal there, Thaddeus, and if we are going to Scotland and make arrangements for the for the travel, I don't feel I'm up to organising all that sort of malarkey this morning. Yes, it's probably going to be a quite testing uh, trip. Oh, oh good, because I was, I was just thinking the last few weeks haven't been challenging enough, Thaddeus. Yes. That, that, that was sarcasm, by the way, that old boy. Okay. Um, I guess he will, you know, do his best to see if um, you know, train, planes, and automobiles. Yeah. To get to Scotland. Uh, yep. There is a note on that. I don't know if uh, airplanes would fly when it's... Uh, this, uh, yeah, it's going to be a train ride. It will indeed be a train ride. As soon as I can figure out where that is. Okay, so... Uh, <laughs> the It says here, uh, the only practical choice to travel to Scotland right now is the railway. Um, so, it's necessary to be on the 8th a.m. train at Houston. So that's not going to happen today <laughs> from what I understand. It is not, in fact, 8 a.m. <laughs> uh, right, so... Okay, so, so that we, be... we may as well have another day of uh, reading then, and then we can uh, yep. head up to Scotland. Yep. I'll arrange uh, for, um, you know, a uh, sleeping compartment and arrangements for the train and... Uh, what have you? Yep. So the train leaves at eight from Houston Station, and that will put you in Inverness Station at seven twenty p.m. We're going way up into the Highlands. Sorry, what time did you say we'd reach Inverness? Um, seven twenty uh, in the evening. And uh, yeah, so Inverness is the big city, the, the where, where, where the train stops, and then you will have to move on from there uh, to get to where you presume uh, you need to go, which would be uh, Lake Mullardock. It's easy enough for you to procure a map of the area, so you can tell that you need to go to Inverness by train. That's easy enough to sort out. Then you somehow need to get from Inverness to, um, it's, it seems to be like a small village called Canic. And then a little bit further away from Canic into basically the wilderness uh, is yeah. Lake Mullardock. Awesome. Yep. So there are some steps to this journey, but uh, you've, You've, it's fairly easy for you to sketch it out and uh, at least see where you need to go. All right, so are we heading up to the Highlands on the 10th? Would that be correct? Yes. All righty then, I will... And John, you can mark down the... Reading days? Uh, should we take the books? Because I don't really know the travel time, but if we are London and we're going to Scotland, that's quite the distance, right? Yeah, it's going to be a day. It takes you a day to get there, according to the book. So we might as well, you know, get a study day. Oh, yeah, it says as well. Um, Otherwise, uh, the journey may be broken with an overnight stay in Manchester, if you wanted to do a... No, we want a sleeping compartment. 
Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, it, the train leaves in the morning, so you're not gonna and it put, give you gets you there in the evening. So okay, yeah. okay, like that. Yeah. 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 Okay, so that would be us then on the tenth. What do you guys pack to take with you to Inverness and the Highlands? Curious question, Johanna. Mm -hmm. um, well, a pistol. And that's it. You just go into the train, you hold up someone, and you tell them, like, go, make the train go. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm not going to say train. Cash, <laughs> uh, warm clothing, and good boots. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, hi hiking gear, some, some spending yeah. money, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Yeah. And you, you have some of this and, because you uh, bought it from. Uh, Claire Melford, like you bought some of this stuff. And <laughs> can we also take the whistle and the silver bell, please? You most certainly can. I don't think we'll need them. What about your arcane library? Like, which <laughs> are you? Which spell books are you warlocks taking with you? I'm, t I'm definitely taking the Turner Codex. I'm reading it on the train. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, yeah, some light sure. reading. Yeah, and the British Guards. <laughs> so, so I think we're, we're we're putting the other ones in our bank vaults, and we're taking the one that we're yeah. um, we're reading. Yeah. 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 one for me. And it, since we're going all the way, I mean, we might as well. I'll I'll, I'll pack my little chemist set. And... <laughs> oh, here we go. A Highland chemistry. That's and, right. Gonna be doing some cocaine in the Highlands. The, <laughs> putting the, the high in the Highlands. <laughs> the old doctor's bag and. Mm -hmm. Good. Yep. Yeah. So, as far as implements of violence, because I know it's a thing that you might want to consider, you're bringing in what? I presume the cane is coming, the sword cane as well. Yep, yeah, and I've still got my old uh, Webley revolver. Yeah. I I'm not really planning on taking firearms with me because I don't possess any. Yep. Yeah. Do, do okay. you know what? Actually, if given the amount of money I've got, I might and what what's happened to us, I might procure a small pistol. Yeah, yeah, you most certainly could buy a revolver. Yeah, easy enough to come by, and not that. Well, I can definitely expensive. recommend this pistol, um, the nineteen eleven. It's an American made, but uh... and it has a magazine. Quite amazing. It has, you don't need to put individual bullets in anymore. It has it? seven rounds in it. Quite the marvel of technology. How much? Um, how much damage does a pistol do? I so will it depends have... on the pistol. Yeah, uh, I believe I have a thing here for that. Maybe because I, unlike usually, I have some. I have the stats on the nine eleven. If you want to. Nineteen eleven. Sorry. Oh, sorry, I just clicked on the wrong thing. It says the handgun is a D20, a D10. Would that be correct, uh, Dennis? Yeah, I mean, the, the 1911 is t 1D10 plus 10. Sorry, plus 2. Yeah. Not plus 10, that would be... Whoa. Yeah, that would be... Uh, so, do I, do I just write like plus 1D10 in the, uh, the damage bit? Or... Let me... I, I don't know how the sheet works exactly. Uh, I can't remember. But so anyway, let me let me try it, and I'll do a sample roll yeah, to see how it works. Yeah. Uh, All right. So I think I need to take the plus out. Oh, here we go. Uh, weapons. So. So, are you buying a revolver? Yeah. Okay, so let's go with 9mm. Yeah, that's a D10. Uh, D10. You need to link your skill. Yeah, I'm going to do that now. I just want to get the damage right first.
I said, well, I've put it in the wrong place. Uh, we can take a short break here as well to allow for use of the facilities and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Getting drinks and such. Cool, so, cool. Yeah, I'll be back in just a bit. They're having a break. What, what, why have people been rolling attack rolls? What's going on? <laughs> John was uh, testing his uh, coding. Oh. So it wasn't just a case of you get on the train, make an attack roll. Why did the cameras move? Uh. I don't like change. Do you know? Yeah, there's a lot of the older Crocodilo campaigns that I I own. They are all involved traveling around the world. Is this a Call of Cthulhu thing? Yeah, because... I, um, I mean, this playtest I was doing, we've just finished now, um, with KOZ, and that also involves traveling. I'm not bit too in there, either. So you... I mean, you went to Russia, right? Mm-hmm. And then there's quite a lot of traveling within Russia as well. Oh, okay. I mean, Russia is big enough to be a planet on its own, so... Mm. <laughs> yes. Kind of weird when you're from a small country like Denmark, and you can't look at the, the sizes of other countries, it's just like... Okay. Mm, true. My country could be um, in this lake. Mm. <laughs> Biscuit with the lingon berry. No, it's a mince pie. Mince pie? That's right. They're still in date. The preserved fruit, they practically never go out of date. Alright. <laughs> like the food you find in Fallout has got to go. Oh! 250 year old chips. Well, let me open them and try them out. <laughs> mm. Oh, they wouldn't be very crunchy after 250 years. <laughs> yes, that. Uh, you, you find a, a Salisbury steak uh, ready to eat <laughs> meal. Uh, but apparently, they are. Radiated, so they uh, last forever. I mean, in Fallout, you know, I'm not saying Salzburg steak is radiated in real life. I wouldn't know. Okay. 
trying to find the name of this um, fighting fantasy miniature, but it is basically like a little little mini Cthulhu monster. I can't remember what the hell it's called. Okay. Are we all strapped in for a train journey? Yes, I come. I was saying to Dennis, I come back and you've all made attack rolls. I'm like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah, we uh, we had a shootout at the station. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we haven't got on the train yet. Houston is full of yeah. cultists. Yeah. <laughs> it's just... We saw someone shady at the train station and Dennis's character was like, mm -hmm. and that was it. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, when... Uh... When you have a hammer, then suddenly every problem is a nail, right? So uh, maybe in your case, I don't know. So uh, Clinton wanted to shoot some pleb on the station. Uh huh. Oh, yes, it works. In twenty plebs. But yeah, choo choo, all aboard. Yep. Let's see. Uh, Off to see the Lord. <laughs> yep. Is that how you pronounce it? Lord. Lord. Lad. Lord. 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 <laughs> probably there's no Scottish people watching. Yeah, I mean, the word is probably, you know, battered and deep fried anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> the Dane coming in with the. With the <laughs> Hard swings. Yeah, that's the reason he turned his camera off. He's surrounded by pastries. <laughs> Smothered in Logan belly jam. Ah. <laughs> okay. Oh, that would be good. Why don't we make pastries with that over here? Well, there's your new business idea. Gap, gap in the market, man. Yeah. yeah. Before we fill in any gaps with jam, let's head to... Scotland, where Haggis lives. And uh, we leave at 8 from Houston. And yeah, uh, it's quite a bit of travel. It spans almost the, the length of the country, <laughs> really, uh, as far as north-south north, south goes. And uh, you've packed all your stuff, you're ready to go, you get on the train, no problems there, you're going along, reading your books, you have your own, there's, there's going to be a time, which we'll jump to uh, post haste, where you're sitting in, I think probably having tea uh, with the um, this is afternoon tea uh, on the train. And your section, where you're, you're being served a tea, uh, you um, have uh, some company from other passengers that have been picked up along the way. The most recent stop was Manchester. And uh, let's see. Let me get to the place. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Question mark. A rising intonation. Okay, getting to Scotland. Yeah, sorry, I lost my place in the book. Okay. Yep, so you're getting your tea served. You have been joined by a gentleman uh, from Manchester station that's sitting with you now due to the seating arrangements uh you're you're getting your tea and biscuits on the table it's one of those where you can like it seats four people and then there's some tables in in the middle there and uh you have been joined by and he he introduced himself very quickly because he's joining he's entering your space uh he is one individual called Henry Lister. Uh, I'll put this on the blop. Uh, he's on roll 20. Do, do they deliberately make these like NPC tokens look as dodgy as possible? 
I think someone may have given that brief to the artist because a lot of them do sort of radiate that kind of like this guy is suspicious. <laughs> Um, however, what really gets your suspicions going in is uh, Lister seems like a fairly quiet guy. He's just like sequesters himself into his seat as much as possible. He's looking out the window and whatnot, and he's sort of fidgety. Um, let me get his full description from there. Here we go. Okay, so weak chinned and dressed in a poor suit. Uh, he exudes a certain desperate determination. And what really uh, gets the biscuit lodged in your throat is when you notice that he's fiddling with his necklace, which happens to be a very familiar looking whistle. Uh huh. Um, yeah, so he's, he's sitting there just, it is clearly a nervous tick. Like he's constantly fiddling with his necklace, and it comes out at one point, which is when you realize that it's a it's a biaki whistle. And um, yeah, he's just staring out the window. So he's I... not sitting at our yeah. It's a table. it's a yeah. It's four seats, and uh, then the table in in the middle. Oh, okay. So he is because he's sitting with you. Nice. Yeah, it's in you. He, she, he's infiltrated you. <laughs> Your conspiracy. L likelihood of shootout on the train increased. <laughs> yeah. Risk of quick drawing pistol. Just shoot him under the table like. Is he boxed in? So he's sitting at the the inner seat, and then uh, let's say Clinton yeah. is. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he, he's looking out the window, like I said. So he's okay. he's. Okay. Clearly at the uh, at the wall seat. I assume we all sort of do that thing where we like we see the whistle uh -huh. and we all like look at each other. Yeah, like, I think mm -hmm. we do. I, like... think we do. <laughs> <laughs> I think I would just play dumb and say to him something like, "Oh, that's a that's an interesting necklace you have." Uh, he like shakes himself uh, away from his thoughts and he he looks at you and just nods a bit and uh, uh, like, removes his hand from it because he realizes he's been toying with it and it's like I imagine I've got a bit pale and like a bit of sweat as I'm like f flashing back to the last time we encountered <laughs> something connected uh, with one of these whistles off to uh, the occult retreat are we <laughs> he um, he's already looking quite uh, sort of, well, I've used the word constantly, but he is also distraught. And when, <laughs> do you actually say to him, like, are yeah. you going to the occult retreat? Yeah. Uh, he, like, the color drains a bit from his face, and for a moment he looks super panicked. And then uh, he, uh, he, his hand goes back to the whistle, and he, he lifts it a bit, and he just nods, nods at you, Thaddeus, and he says, Oh, oh! Thank my luck. I'm not the only one who's late. Yes, Ooh. I am. Um, so we have two whistles, at least, right? I believe so, so. Yeah. So would it be okay if Olivia had one and I had another? That's fine. Okay, so I'll I'll take uh, mine out of my pocket and uh, just put it on the table, just you know, to sh let's show it to him. Oh, I'm somewhat relieved, but. Also, I. Mm. So, going to um, Inverness Station, I presume. Yes. Yeah, he smiles a bit, and he reaches for his entirely untouched tea and biscuits now. So he takes a tentative sip. I'm gonna quickly look up and down the carriage to make sure that no one else is like watching us and going, hey, yeah. we have these cool whistles. <laughs> yeah, <we're> gonna... <laughs> Turn around, everyone yeah. in the train's like, hey, guys. <laughs> everyone turns yeah. to look oh, straight at you. Lovely. Like, like we, we're sitting there thinking we have him, but then everyone else oh, shows that we're kind of like, oh, fuck. Yeah, it's a twist. And then another twist. <laughs> yeah. Um, so he, um, yeah, there, there's no one's looking at you uh, sideways or keeping an eye on you. Good, good, good. Uh, he says that uh, 
I, as you know, <laughs> we, uh, I was supposed to be uh, in Verness uh, Station on the 5th, but I had to organize my departure and a lot of things to take care of. And Alas, we got uh, held up as well, as you might have uh, guessed. Mm. Well, uh, I suppose there's something to be said for putting one's affairs in order uh, before going on a vacation such as this. And he, he gives you a, like a very poor, like conspiratorial sort of like, uh, give me a psychology role, everyone, <laughs> as you talk to Mr. Lister here. Oh, oh yeah, good. So uh, Thaddeus and Clinton, you can tell that he's barely suppressing like a hysteric episode. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> he's this close to snapping out of his anxiety. To, to, to be honest, I was thinking about whether I can disembowel him with a cucumber sandwich, but... <laughs> I mean, that that is a perfect culty thing to do. Wait, sorry, another cucumber sandwich over here. <laughs> make, make sure that the crisps are extra crispy. <laughs> yes, um, make it sharp. <laughs> it's going to be quite a revelation. Uh, hopefully, yes. Quite. Mm -hmm. well, that's been talk for so long, so well, I think mm -hmm. we are all. Uh, oh yes, since anticipation uh, of this. Yes, ever since the um, the the event at uh, Claire Muffler, uh Yes, I've been looking forward to this since I couldn't make it then. Yes, I presume you didn't either. As you said, I uh, needed to put some affairs in order first, and uh, it mm. took a little longer than. Um, and he kind of, you know, plays that whole uh, look at the wife, and that is, she's to blame. I did late to the dinner party, so he kind of gives Clinton that look to try to, you know, make it seem as they have been innocently doing something else and not, you know, hunting down cultists in the middle of the night and trying to figure out what's going on. <clears throat> so, um, I suppose, um, we can hope, um, they wait for us and they have, uh, giving um, the circumstances um, a more forgiving nature. Well, yes, uh, I think given, given the schedule is quite urgent. So I think it's not going to be a problem right. if we're slightly late. And you can tell that, yeah, he says, I would think it's not a problem. What what he really is, is saying is, I uh, uh, really, hope. really hope it's not going to be a problem because yeah. I'm scared. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, mm. we've been waiting um, years now for that release, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, so um, I believe I'll, I'll go to the little boy's room. Right. Uh, that, the tweet, the tea has quite uh, gotten to me, I, I'm afraid. Yeah, so he goes to awkwardly maneuver out of the seat and he heads on to where the lavatory is. Does he have a briefcase? Uh, as it happens, he does not. Oh. He seems to just have his clothes. Well, that's suspicious for a start. What sort of gentleman doesn't carry a briefcase with them? Mm. A, 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 a blackguard, that's what I think. <laughs> hmm. Bugger. Well, he seems to be quite um, in the hurry, so maybe he left in uh, whatever he was uh, wearing. And the urgency of uh, finding a train. Should we um, use him as a way in? You know, we show up with someone mm. that. Okay, so he he he'll know more what he's doing. And yes, we can so him. 
We shouldn't, you know, take care of him in the laboratory. He said, we, so we shouldn't take care of him in the laboratory. And you nodded. Oh, I misheard you. I thought you said should. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm happy to. I haven't put any laxatives in his tea, if that's what you're saying. This is like that sketch with the, the mobs. <clears throat> I sure hope someone take care of that damn politician. And all the mobs, yeah, we sure hope so. <laughs> and they don't want to say murder. <laughs> okay, well, uh, I guess we got a way in. I don't know if it's a good thing or bad thing, but we'll play by ear. G given recent events, oh boy, I'm going to hazard a guess. Bad. Yes. Hmm. Perhaps, yes. So, um, we need to probably, I don't know if this whistle is, um, like, um, the badge to get into the clubhouse or something like that. But in that case, what is our cover story with uh, Clinton not having one? Well, perhaps this man is a way in, as it were, but not in the way that we originally right. thought. Okay. Hmm. I suppose so. So he's, you know, sipping some tea, waiting for Clinton to go up and murder him. I, I was just thinking of doing a switch. Oh, the um, the trick you you have, yes, most excellent. <clears throat> this is your opportunity to shine. I just need something else to replace it. Quite, quite. Um, he uh, kind of takes out the the whistle, and so um, what do we have? Um, I have a cigarette case, I have a lighter. Uh... It needs to be on a chain Quite. or a string. It needs to go around his neck. I take out the pendulum with the ring and remove the chain and give him the chain. Might work, but it needs to have a weight. Yes, we just need some weight. But he, oh, maybe it doesn't work. He seems to be fiddling quite a lot with it, so it would be difficult. We, we need him to, we need him to relax, possibly sleep even. Perhaps you could just simply steal it from him and not replace it by something. But he fiddles with it. I love the way we've fallen back on our tried and tested plan. Perhaps he needs to be asleep for a period of time. <laughs> 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 Could you whip up some sleeping gas? Oh, I think we should make sure and gas the entire train. No. He needs, he needs to not be fiddling with it. Oh, this is going to have traumas with gas attacks. Which means sleeping. Well, maybe um, once we leave the station, you could... Uh, Just mm. grab it and... I'm just yes. going to glance at the tea and then glance at the doctor's bag. He might have some more tea, but he implied that he'd had enough. Maybe... Hold on, we're, in... we're beyond Manchester now, so would it be sort of late afternoon coming to that. Yeah, I would guess so. And this is just a guesstimate because we don't I mean, we just have, have if we're gonna leave him whistleless uh, and unconscious in Manchester, that's even more cruel than anything else we've done. 
Yeah, he he got up from Manchester, <laughs> so you yeah. you'll be oh, tossing him to a field. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, I was just thinking, because we're disembarking at 20 past 7, that would mean that they're presumably going to serve some dinner. Yeah. So, if he's not in the mood for tea, we could do it then. And then what? You just want to take the item, man? Hmm. Yeah, take the item, leave him asleep on the train. By the time he wakes up, he'll be well past. He'll be back well, in use. <clears throat> Well, if you will excuse me, I take the doctor's bag and go out somewhere, um, I guess, another 11. Sorry, where I can prep a little syringe. I, okay. I might also have some laudanum left, or laudanum. Excellent. I'll take that. So you're preparing a massive knockout drug for him? I mean, when you say it like that, it makes it sound like a bad thing, but yeah. Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know why that is. <laughs> he just needs to relax. He's obviously highly strong. Yeah, he. that is true. That is true. Man's so, a guitar <laughs> string. Okay, so I'm gonna, you know, try to apply what medicine knowledge and what chemistry knowledge I have. Mm -hmm. And based on his uh, petite stature, I'm not I'm going to try to, you know, make the dose high enough to knock him out, but not, you know, I don't want him to OD. Okay. Yeah, give it, give us a medicine roll. Uh -oh. Yeah, Mr. Price is just going to be in the background just shaking his head. He's like, <laughs> "You do you remember when you said you don't drop the bodies? <laughs> oh. You lied." <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> I have this high skill, and I knew it when I said that. I knew it. I pretty knew it. Good. <laughs> yes. Fine. Okay. So you have the perfect dose, surely. Yes. And what what happens have, then? I, I don't even have luck enough to buy it off. Oh. <laughs> no. Well, I um, you know, put the put a little cap on so I don't prick myself, and I put it in uh, my in my jacket pocket and. Uh, huh? I await the arrival of the Salisbury stick. Okay. So, uh, yeah, eventually they, they're coming back, they're getting the teacups and whatnot, and they're asking you what you want for dinner and, and that kind of thing. And um, Lister never comes back. Ah, <laughs> damn it. I go up and go and look in the laboratory where he went. Yeah, I think I'll yeah, he is he is there just like in a corner, just staring at a wall, uh, knuckles white. He, he's having a, an episode. Okay, I'll, I'll just take the whistle from him and leave him alone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just do that. <laughs> he's, <laughs> yep, he's uh, he's um he's having a really bad time in yeah, there. And, uh, oh, conductor, there seems to be a man on the laboratory having an episode of some sort yeah yeah they'll go deal with it yeah for sure they'll give him some sedatives maybe with the correct dose <laughs> i don't know i want to see that role too <laughs> yeah, it's so, an NPC superpower yeah so we give uh we give the whistle to clinton as you mm -hmm. um yeah and now we are all disguised yep so you get your stakes and whatnot lister never reappears uh, he's been taken somewhere by the conductors, and well, yep. Meanwhile, I hold a very lethal dose of blood. Yeah, <laughs> you have, you have, uh, to your knowledge, a sedative in your pocket. Yes, yes. <laughs> Let's hope no one in the group needs a sedative. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to feel sorry for the first person we see. But we're like, they need to relax a bit. Yeah, <laughs> forever. <laughs> Uh, cool. So, uh, unless there's something you want to do, we can move on to Inverness, the capital of the Highlands. Just right. There's one. no one else we want to knock out or steal. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we'll move on there. Uh, let me just check. Oh yeah, I still have some stuff here. So you get to Inverness. And you have your maps. You brought them from London. Mm -hmm. You know where you should go. 
you very quickly conclude that there's no there's no service that you could buy that could take you to Kanek, the village that is closest to a Lake Mulardok. So you conclude that you need to uh, borrow a car. However, two things are true. It is the evening and there are no cars to be uh, borrowed. And that is because they have already been rented. I wonder why that would be. Um, uh, so if we, we can borrow a car. <laughs> this is like GTA in Vernus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's there's a, a better chance if you try and get a car when it's daytime tomorrow, but in the evening the cars are all rented because it was rented them. Yeah. Great oh. surprise. Um, yeah. And um, it's evening, so there's not that many places open. Is anyone else loving the fact that, like, between last session and this, it seems like someone's like taken the safety cap off Thaddeus? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> like, pre previous speeches, yeah. he was like, "Oh, we need to be careful. We need to be safe." Now he's like, "Drag them all, steal me a car, get me ammunition." He had some horrible experiences. Okay. Hmm. Obviously, Olivier doesn't really know anything about Inverness, but considering mm -hmm. we have to get to a lake, yep. and Inverness is on the coast, mm -hmm. then is there a way to get there by boat? I'm going to say, if you want a boat... Uh, do they actually talk about the boat here in the book? Let me just check. I was going to say, can I, can I just ask a quick question as well? Given that mm -hmm. I've been like dreaming about lakes pretty much like non-stop since this mm -hmm. thing started. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's like a famous landmark, normally like local places, they might have some like pictures or like watercolors mm -hmm. of it. I'm gonna see if I can find anything like that. And if I see any pictures of this like lake, does it look startlingly familiar to me? Uh, I guess if you were to look up now that you're here, you scrounge up some local material, go to local places looking for this kind of thing. Uh, yeah, you spend enough time in the evening looking for this stuff. You can definitely find some, let's say, like local, I suppose, like tourism. Yeah. Like, hey, yeah. like there's normally there's normally, there's normally a lot of local artists who do yeah. like pictures yeah. and they're trying to sell them and whatever. Yeah, a so, podcast that was a big thing at this time, right? Yeah, you mm -hmm. can you can probably find a, a, a portrait of most of the sort of like uh, scenic features that are available nice. locally. So you could definitely find one of Loch Mulardark, and it's the egg. it's the same thing you like drew back in the day. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy this picture, mm -hmm. like as we've all been wandering around doing like I think, and then when we all like meet up in the evening or whatever, I, I, I'm going to sort of have this little picture, and I'll be like, oh, I've just been looking around the local tourist base, and you see this here. You remember me saying I was dreaming about a lake? This is the lake. The exact lake, and I'll take out like my sketchbook with some of my sketches in and show like that they match up. I think I think you're going to be the third prophetic at this rate. First, it's Lucius, then it's Roby, and then it could be you. Uh, okay. Um... Regarding the boat. You could get from Inverness to, or Inverness, uh, whichever way it's pronounced, uh, you could get from there to uh, Drumna Uh However, it is winter, so it might be sketchy going there. Uh, it's going to be sketchy going by car as well, mind you, but uh, uh, there there is a boat route as well, which I can see here on the map. So if you want to make a roll for tonight, it's going to be difficult. But possible, still, like we we can. Uh, how how far is it that way? Mm -hmm. It is by road. Uh, let's see, ten, uh, twenty miles. Okay, so I mean more than we can just reasonable to walk. Yeah, not not feasible mm -hmm. to walk. However, I could, because I know you guys are loaded, um, I'm gonna say if you wanted to buy. A car and spend like just outright buy. Just walk up to a person and be like, knock on the door and be like, you have a car outside. I would like to buy it for blah, this yes. enormous stack of money. 
and you can yes. have a car <laughs> or a boat a boat is fine as well yeah, but i mean as you said it's probably like easier to go by car in this in this weather potentially yeah so is clinton in the market for <laughs> a, a range rover I'm not sure they have Range Rovers in this um, historical period, old boy. Yeah, I would suggest Land Rider. Vintage Range Rover. <laughs> Whatever the equivalent would be. Well, I, I did say I was only bringing spending money on me, so I'm not sure I actually have the cash on me to. Uh, you could you could probably write some sort of, you know. Uh, Banker's draft. Yeah. Shut like... up. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, no, I, don't want a, I don't want a car. <laughs> I don't want a car in inverted. Yeah. What, what am I going to do with it? Oh yeah, I'll buy, buy a car and then I've got to drive us all back down to London if I want to get the car to London. Uh, That's not happening. I love it. Every 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 scene, Clinton has been here's some money, here's some money, here's some money, here's some money. So when we say, oh, go buy this, <coughs> I own a spending to, um, one. Sell it to Lister when he when he eventually gets off the train or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah, it's still happening. If you're quick. How much would how purchasing much, how, a car deplete my yeah, resources? How, how much would a car be? I'm going to have to look at the book here in just a minute. If I'm having to dig into my savings, you're out of luck. I think, uh, I, can, I, think I can spend £50 or dollars. Um, yeah, motor same. vehicles. Uh, those are motorcycles. We don't want that. Uh, okay. Maybe we can do. I'm not sure what kind of car it would be in the UK, but we have Aston Martin, <laughs> which is that that is super expensive. We're not doing that. So, yeah. um, the cheapest would be Ford Focus, at um, sixteen thousand five hundred USD. You you are shit out of luck. <laughs> I mean, is that modern cash or nineteen twenties cash? It's because... it's. It's 1920s cash. That seems insanely expensive. Well, the, well, automobiles were, still weren't massively common at the time, so yeah, mm -hmm. not, not for the common man, obviously. But yes, I'm not digging into my savings to buy us some scabby car in Inverness. Okay. No, we are not. Um, maybe we should uh, look into uh, a cart with a mule. <laughs> okay, if you want to buy a cart, that is easier and far cheaper. How about a sled? If you want, yeah, a sled and some <laughs> some draft horses. I mean, that's still a thing uh, in this period, right? Quite yeah, crisp, most certainly in the in the country. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So let's do that. I mean, yeah, so sled, you... so, let's go easier in the in the snow. Mm -hmm. the okay, so you roll up into a farm. <laughs> oh, this is hilarious. Okay, so we we go we walk out of uh, in Venice and. Uh, <laughs> We get to the first farm, and uh, <laughs> you go up to the door, I guess. And this is like the cart outside and two of your horses. How much dinero is that? <laughs> okay, mucho, good. More, mucho dinero, senor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, are we doing this? Okay, so... Th Thaddeus rolling up to a farm and like, eh, essay. I want to buy your sled. <laughs> How much for the wheels outside? <laughs> like he's turned into a Colombian drug lord. <laughs> yeah. Suddenly it's like somewhere in there, uh, that is apparently turned into Pablo Escobar because yep. he's just like drugs, guns, yep. poisoning people. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Somehow, I mean, that's what the loss of sanity will do to you. <laughs> Great. Okay, so... Give me a someone. Give me a roll for buying carts and horses out of a farm. <laughs> I mean, a, a sled would be preferred, but um, okay. Yeah, well, yeah, that's that's so. I probably, guess yeah. What, pers persuade. Yeah, that seems good. Uh, credit rating as well. If you want to roll in with like your dick swinging in the wind, being like, "Hey, SA, we're from the big, big city, so you better listen to us." Uh, that might work as well because the persuasion isn't working great. So, does anyone want to swing in with the yeah, money? I try to swing my dick then. Mm. Unless, uh, 
Clinton want to do his done hard yeah. success. Yeah, yeah. So Clinton, I get a wa- get a wallet out. Yeah, Clinton gets the the actual hard currency out, and the tune changes, <laughs> and you just give them. I think probably what will happen is you just because you said you don't carry your entire Scrooge McDuck bag of money with you. Mm-hmm. You um you probably just like hand over pretty much all of your spending money. It's just like yeah, that's there fine. You go. <laughs> Uh, for the minute, I'm just like, okay, can I just pay you the money? Can we, can we conclude this transaction and get where we're going? Because like, I can't listen to Thaddeus talking about slides anymore. <laughs> yeah, so you... He's talking about delivering it. presents to the local villages. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and there's this, like, American company that he has some difficulties with because they want his appearance. <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah, a combination of Pablo Escobar and Father Christmas, that would be a thing, wouldn't it? No, oh, it's a, it's a Grampus or whatever, the, the dark sand. Yeah, that, Krampus. that's a white, Krampus. That's a white <laughs> ass Christmas, is that what? <laughs> uh, so you buy a sled and two horses <laughs> to make your way. Great, who's going to drive? Good question. Um... I mean, it's, if it's, it's operate heavy machinery, not me. No, it's it's funny because in um, in our Russian play test, we also got a sled, um, and we used an actual drive sled skill. Yeah, we we don't need to roll for anything right now, but I'm just asking like who's who's doing the thing. I, sub- I, I want to know what it looks like <laughs> when you guys go on a sled ride. What what, what sort of skill does it involve? I mean, I've got I, drive auto, but yeah, I, I'm going to say drive. Well, I, I've I've got thirty for drive auto, so I'm, I'm quite happy to just do the general, like oh, yeah. giddy up, break, break. yeah, the whole all that. Yeah. Come on, well, and the rest of the set the heart, right, you know, with the colours up and. The... I'm just going to be driving along, lamenting my life, just being like, I was a successful rich artist, out of the world at my feet, and now I'm driving some broke ass like cart through Inverness looking for like an evil cult who all have whistles and apparently ha- are known to have breakdowns in in like toilets on like, how, how did my life come to this yeah, I, I just wanted to go to the theatre man why why did I return to London <laughs> I had it good in Paris yep <laughs> and of that like, weird occult stuff it's all over in the UK <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yep. No yeah, this there. is this is turning into one of those classic stories. Is it like Jack London or someone with the like winter stories with sled rides and the snow and whatnot? People tend end up eating each other and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's, good times. Th- th- this is an example of how no good deed goes unpunished. Because I was quite happy in France. Then m- my sister died. I came over just to comfort my brother-in-law. You know. Maybe sort of get back into the scene and, and look what's happened. I should have just stayed in Paris. Yeah. Drink, drinking yeah. absinthe and doing some painting. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say you would have had the ferry to keep you company instead of a couple of horses and Pablo. Yeah, fucking Pablo claws back there. <laughs> okay, so um, retroactively, there's been some stuff which we need to give some roles for. Uh, so, Clinton, can you give me uh 2d8 All right. <clears throat> seven okay that seems great so uh yeah uh you can deduct that from your sanity and then uh you can uh and let's actually look at the the date here so that i can get it correct so we're currently ooh, the current day is the 10th still yeah the very it's, dark evening of the it, 10th it's all good i've still got 34 sanity yep what so uh, put down the 9th of december john okay it's going to be an important date going forward and um then you can also let me check what is on a character sheet in this game so he's he's lost seven sanity all in one go uh yeah but that happened a, a bit ago uh this is stuff that has already happened it hasn't happened on on camera 
but this is something that happened when he was doing his studies. Uh, he had a thing going on back then. He most certainly had an episode, uh, but it was a very special episode, which didn't end up with him in the street, naked, running and screaming. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, instead, that, that, that's just a weekend for Clinton, man. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, nothing unusual there. I was going to say, very impending bout of madness coming. Did you yep. find? Did you find him crying in the bathroom? Uh, that depends, but Clinton, you can add on fifteen to your power. Stat. Oh, fifteen. Cool. Yep. Jesus. I guess someone turned sorcerer. Dun and dum. Yep. All righty then. I did Good. wonder about that point ahead he started to wear. And well, that black cat I've had sat on my shoulder all the time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the like pentagram cufflinks you have? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh okay. Where were we? Here we go. So this is gonna be a wild ride, because you you guys managed to find the slowest possible method of traveling. <laughs> Hey. Uh, hey, it's safe. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is very good. It is uh, an excellent method of travel during winter. So that is great because with a car, there would have been a point where I would have asked you to make some rolls, and it would have been not great for you. <laughs> if um, I car. Yeah, yeah, that would be a thing, wouldn't it? Like, let's go. There's a cult. They're doing a thing, and then car crash. You all died. Mm-hmm. Campaign ends. <laughs> <laughs> okay so it is an hour and a half by car from Inverness to Canuck. Oh uh, boy 15 years by sled <laughs> <laughs> 7 years um <laughs> Just going through if they have any estimation of how long this would take by other methods. I mean, I have no idea. There's no snow in Denmark, so. Mm. Yeah, we're just going to ballpark it. Um, Just because you don't need to be careful, I'm going to say it's not that slow because you can keep going um, because it's safer. Yeah, I mean, the the biggest risk is one of the horses breaking a leg or something. Yep. So I'm going to say it's going to take uh, like two and a half hours. So if we spend some time in Inverness after having arrived at 20 past seven, let's say it's going to be around 11-ish. Ooh, close to midnight. When, yeah. Two minutes. Um. <clears throat> Yeah, so it's almost at the witching hour. And uh, <laughs> uh, you get to Kanek village, very small, uh, about a dozen or so um, uh, stone houses. There's nothing much there. It's a sort of rural community. There is, you think, maybe a, a kind of a public house uh, where you could probably find some people who I think we all need to regain some warmth after that sled ride so yeah, yeah. I mean if you want to pop by there to get some like late soup uh, you're probably good well well, I hope Thaddeus is play, paying for the, um, the rooms because I'm now skint so there is indeed the Glenafry guest house so you can Great. pop by yes some yep. uh, you know we need to At sure the, that warm wine well. thing, Madhu. <clears throat> malted wine, malted wine. Yep. Malted yep. Wine. You can get some. You can get turned <laughs> at the Glenafer guest house, and uh, on malted wine, uh, it is being served by uh, an individual who introduces himself as Fergus. Um, he's doing the night shift. Uh, his missus has cooked some soup. If you want that, he can heat it up. We would very much like some soup. Thank you, yep. Fergus. So, so when he's soup. Serv- yes. So he, when he's serving us, the obvious question: 
Does he doesn't have a whistle. Oh. <laughs> he doesn't have a whistle on display. No. D- does he like put the cream on top of the soup in like the shape of the yellow sign or anything? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gives you a gives you a cheeky wink. <laughs> no, that doesn't happen. No. He summons baby Cthulhu out of the soup. <laughs> no, it's it's not a shrimp soup. <laughs> Right, so uh, Kanek village, uh, you're there, you have your soup, you've got your mulled wine buzz on, you've got your horses and your sweet ride outside. You know from like having warmed yourself up and talking about what you're going to do next and looking at your maps, you can see and having been outside as well, it's a frozen, muddy, not really a road, but it could serve as one that leads from Kanek into a forest and through the forest you will get eventually to Lake Malardor. <laughs> and you you estimate it's going to take you maybe another hour, maybe two get there, depending on how rough the forest bit is. I assume it's going to be on foot as well. You could try it with a sled. It's going to be far better with a sled than it would have been with a uh, car you could try the sled on feet of course that is it just takes more time so I, i'm gonna say double the time if you go on foot or mm. the about two hours maybe if you take the sled to the fatmobile <laughs> do you want to go now well g- given that uh, the fellow on the train said he was already late yeah he was supposed to be there on the fifth yeah, so, yeah, so I'm so, guessing so times he, of the essence. He's very late. I'm, I'm guessing times of the essence, that, so... Yeah, but maybe we just, you know, turn up late, since it's uh, almost five days. But yes, okay. Uh, he just takes... Sense. Yes, he takes uh, some more malt wine, and then... <clears throat> let's um, be on, then, and throws a penny medu thingy, whatever, pays for the soup and the wine. <laughs> Whatever peasant money you ask for this guy. How, how many thingy menus for this soup, bartender? <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. So you, you play Fergus, and uh, off you go into the dark forest, I presume. Yeah, yeah I mean, um, who doesn't want to go into a dark forest chasing down a cult at the middle of the night? Yeah, in the heart of winter. Yes. Yeah, that sounds like a great time <laughs> yeah. for some London boys. <laughs> <laughs> and our French connection. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the friends, the French uh, uh, reinforcements. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. so yeah, we can depart Kanek Village. Yep, so the snow covered track leads from Kanek through a thick forest of old pines mixed with heather and outcrops of granite. Uh, you can see that the river Kanek, which you know from your maps, it runs parallel to the muddy road. Um, and uh, yeah, so you, let's say, uh, after half an hour, please give me a natural world roll, I believe it's called in this edition. Natural world. It is indeed. Oof. <laughs> I have also failed. Damn, where do you find it? However, I'm going to spend 13 luck to make mine a success. Right, oh. So, I suppose because, Clinton, you've been sort of... It's, it's a weird feeling of returning to a familiar place you've never been to. I suppose that's why you do notice that many of the trees, the old pines in the forest, they strain towards the lock, Malardok. They're sort of turned towards that direction. And you make note that actually some root systems are partially exposed where the whole trunk of a tree has tilted considerably. And... Having made this um, observation, eventually you you pick up on this ambient noise of muted groaning and straining as 
some the the trees uh, strain towards the lock, and there's uh, the subtle crack of roots as you go with your sled. What do you say? The I will lines are calling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I will of course point that out to my companions. What the, this weird revelation you just have? Okay, I will uh, <clears throat> look very distraught. <clears throat> Yeah, as I was driving along, I'd say, look at those trees up there. They, they, they seem to be bending in the direction that I can... If, if you listen, I, I swear I can hear the, the, the cracking of tree boughs. Um, sorry, mate. We just seem to be frozen, so... Yes, I'm, I'm quite sure. Of it. Look, look at that one there. You can see the trunk's bent over so far that the roots are exposed. Most odd. Never seen anything like it. It's almost like a magnet. Indeed, it's like something was pulling them towards the lock. Hmm. Yeah, it is. But yep. it's uh, disturbing. So you notice as you go that there's a track that diverges from what you suppose is the actual main. Uh, path towards uh, Loch Marladrach that goes north and east. Yeah, it's it's your assumption that this is a diversion path from the main one, but are there any fresh-ish tracks? No. The snow has covered them. Mm hmm so what are we doing then, fellows? Are we uh, carrying on this main track, or are we, uh, are we heading down there? Hard to say, really. What do, what do you say, Thad? Thad! We... <clears throat> what? what? What do you say? There's another track heading off there. Or should we keep on the main one, or... Uh... Uh, can I see what ways the trees are pointing? Leaning? Uh, they're leaning towards where you think the main path is going, so towards the lock. This one, you're you're going that way, and the the uh, side track is going this way. Let's take the side track. So uh, a west, okay. sort of like away from the lock. Then, uh -huh. yeah, that's what he wants. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> can we? Um, how do you guys feel about London? <laughs> All right. I was expecting me... Thaddeus to be like, ah, I think we should go back to St. Agnes. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I, I feel like I need some rest. Okay, let's see. I mean, after this, I mean, <clears throat> given the, that I just heard that Clinton is down to, uh, was it 37 points of sanity? I think someone uh, should uh, spend a little time on that. Uh... 34, old boy, 34. Still got less. So you travel. Uh, about a full mile down this side path and you come upon a small clearing and in that clearing, partially snow covered, you find one of the monoliths you saw at Springer Mound. It seems to be the one that you read back there as well. So you can see chiseled on it the phrase expectant we raise our muzzles to smell the air for hatred we strain our ears for the sound of love well i think we're all agreed this time we probably shouldn't shoot the damn thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, regarding that <clears throat> if we look around i mean if we just i presume you stop the sled yeah um, if we look at it does it seem to have um, i guess gun wounds yeah, it's the same one. There's the whatever damage was dealt to it is here. Look, it's they moved it. Well, obviously. Well, they could have been, you know, similar but different. A but a but stone thing, Medus. So what now? Do we they moved it? Is there any other sort of like trail like leading out of this clearing, or is it just no. back to the main track? Yeah, back to the main track. Did you mention whether it was standing or laying? Sorry? 
the, the upper, upper. It's the monolith upright. Yeah, it's monolith. Down. yeah, it's it's upright. Yeah. Okay. Huh. If I lean towards it, I mean, is that enough to just you know just shift it a little? Not necessarily tip it over, but can I can I feel it yield a little? Mm, no, it's it weighs like a ton. Yeah. So. I mean, I this requires granite. Yeah, that, that is, so given what happened last time, I'm not sure you should be interfering with that thing. I'm sorry, Clinton. Isn't this what we're exactly what we're doing? We're interfering with things we don't understand. Well, well, well uh, yes, but, but, but by a certain definition. But uh, as I say, you know what happened last time? We, we tried to directly interfere with one of these things. Oh, the vampires, yes. And I'm going to like look up into the sky just in case. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to look up in the sky too. It is very dark. It is nighttime, and we're far away from uh, uh, industry as such. It's a starry winter night. I'll, I'll get out my pocket flask and have a, a dram of. Uh, and hand it over to Oliver as I be into this lane. <sighs> Well, uh, I guess we must sort you on. Okay, and we'll head back to the main track and continue to follow okay. it. Yep. Okay, uh, give us a, a listen roll. This would be when you're halfway there, whoa, living on a, maybe. Oh, I actually passed a roll. Hard success. A critical failure for old Clinton. Mm -hmm. that, uh, seriously, I can't find anything on this sheet. When whatever sound it is occurs, that's probably when I've been past the flask, and I'm like, mm -hmm. "Yeah, I think it's it's pretty Why good." It listen on the same as spot hidden. Damn it! Because it's an upper order. Shazam. <laughs> I'll spend no, I won't spend a lock because I'll have made it. That's good strategic thinking. Yeah, you're too busy looking at your character sheet yep. to, to hear it. I think it's it's pretty fitting that Clinton spectacularly fails this. I have a reason for that, and it's not just because you're drinking. Um it's so Olivier. Uh you here you've been listening to these straining noises and the the bark. Uh, breaking as these pines stretch towards the lake, mm -hmm. but you you hear a, a snap and a crack, which you don't think is like one of the root systems being torn up from the ground or like a branch breaking off. Mm -hmm. It it sounds like a uh, like a tree, the actual main trunk of a tree uh, being broken, and oh. um, uh, you. Uh, <laughs> Let's see, where are we? Uh, you glance at the, at the noise and against the starry sky, you can see a fairly large space where no stars are. And this black blotch in the sky moves. It moves in a sort of diagonal direction over the uh, the path that you're traveling with your sled, and you can see it has uh, uh, collided, I suppose, with one of the pines, and the top of the top of the pine has now tilted to the side, just splintered um, as a result. And Clinton, you are, uh, I suppose, driving the sled. Yep. Uh, however, you are overtaken entirely, um, subsumed into a vision which you've had before. You saw this in the dingy, junk-covered backyard of Bacon. You were in a forest. It was night. It was snowy. You were going towards the lake. And a shadow falls upon your person and also the sled 
as uh, Olivier, I suppose you will be the one who actually notices this thing mm -hmm. uh, because you actually noted that, hey, that sounded different. That wasn't a tree, uh, like a root system. Uh, Clinton, you're entirely entranced in your yeah, own vision. I'd just be sort of like loosely still holding the reins and I'd be like... You're like, this is it. This is the exact thing that you saw. Um, and uh, Olivier, what you see is it's dark, obviously, but there's a sort of sort of like an oblong shape from which seem to extend some kind of appendages that grasp at treetops or just the air with the same kind of graspy notion. Uh, it seems to be dragging itself, this, this blob uh, of darkness against the very dark sky. So you don't see a lot, but you see some of the silhouette, I guess, of this thing. And you obviously see the, the trees that it touches. Uh, it drags itself forward by grabbing the air or treetops. And it's going across your, the shadow falls upon your, your sled. What is do it, you do? Is it coming in straight in our direction or kind of? Uh, it's going straight? above you. Or above? It, yeah, it's, it's at the treetop level going above you. Okay. Um, I instinctively pull on the reins to stop. Yeah, so yeah. Clinton is noise. doesn't even notice. <laughs> and hopefully this thing will just pass over us. Yep. I, <clears throat> what is going on? And I look around. I see. I, point, I just point straight up, like it's a dark thing. It's grabbing onto trees. Look. Yeah, so Thaddeus, if you do glance up, you see this absence of stars. I guess you do instinctively when someone... I guess, that. yeah. <laughs> there's a, there's an absence of stars which seems to have some kind of appendages that it uses to drag itself forward in the air. And it's, it's passing quite high up because it's above the trees. And yeah, it's moving. It doesn't, like, it's not coming for you or anything. It's, it's passing above you. Hmm. Into the direction of yon side path that you visited previously. I think it just stares without saying anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Clinton, uh, as the shadow passes the um, sled, you you start to realize that uh, Olivier is excitedly like motioning and like whispering oh. aggressively oh. through the teeth. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, 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 what's going on? Yeah, and then that dun dun dun. You you see the great shadow shape against the sky. I think I sort of uh, turn around and I'm gonna like grab hold of like uh, Thaddeus's like uh, like jacket sleeve or something. And I'm like Thaddeus. When, when we were in when we were in Bacon's backyard and I. I, I, I tried to use that uh, that that strange chant out of one of those books uh, to, to, to try and distract him. You, you recall I had a uh, I, I had some sort of vision or uh, something like that. This is it, Thaddeus. This this is the very image of the vision that I had. We we, we were in we were in this place, and uh, I, I, I saw a shadow fall, fall over us as we as we were moving, and I'm sort of like clutching his his jacket sort of sleeve tight, looking like quite panicked and disturbed. If it's possible, I don't know if this is the right time to use this spell, but would Le Cheur du Savant work at this point? To yeah. Get an inkling of where this creature has come from? Let's see. Let us see. I don't want to say I shoot at the darkness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no attack in the darkness. No. After all, they believe in a thing called love. <laughs> yeah, well, they they strain their ears for the sound of it, to be sure. And they mm. turn their muscles up. I strained my ears for it. Well, <clears throat> Teddy uh, grabs uh, Clinton's uh, hand. Yes, calm down. Try to calm down. But, but, but you don't understand, Teddy. This is exactly what I saw. Exactly in every detail. I do understand. And he kind of looks uh, a little on the edge himself. Uh, 
Because he remembers that freaking spell where you saw your own demise. Yeah, that, that's why I'm a bit panicked. Um, um... So, Olivier, uh, mm. you could use the the chant. However, it does take you quite a bit. Like it's a lot. Like it's you need to repeat the mantra. So it takes you a bit. And well, I'm just going to let you know what it does. So okay. uh, you would have to roll for Cthulhu Mythos if you wanted to discern like what this thing was. But for mm -hmm. the chant itself, um, what it allows you to do is uh, it gives you a, a bonus die to Ooh. basically roll for like intellectual whatever, like whatever has to do with the mind. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get a bonus die to that. So, so I love the fact that as we're like starting to panic, freaking Olivia's like, I don't want to the situation now. Some like mythos ass chant. Yeah, <laughs> that, that'll, that'll do the trick. We're, we're, we're there like panicking, like, oh, it's a vision. And Olivia's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good to look for time. Ah. So basically, what you're saying is I get a bonus die on a Cthulhu mythos. Yeah, if, if, you, if you spend, the, it says the casting time is half an hour. Yeah. So you would need yeah. to chant for quite a bit, and then you would be able to roll with an extra die with Cthulhu Mythos. Sure. Okay, so <laughs> Olivia starts up a, um, a, a chant in French. Hey, I, will, <laughs> I, I will scoot over Maybe. and I sit on the, uh, and, take, uh, and take the reins while uh, <laughs> they can start and casting spells and... I'll try to find a way to turn the sled around so we can leave this shadow. Yeah, yeah, the shadow passes on its own. Oh, okay. You, you were you were you were stopped for a bit. Okay. Uh, cool. But the shadow passes because it's moving okay. actively. Okay, mm. then he just stops the sled and I think it's time for you know, we need to we need to relax and he gets out his cocaine and <laughs> yeah, was, uh, uh, she, she's just got real. There's only one solution. <laughs> Do you need Looks uh, like it's cocaine o'clock. That's what's going to alert. Need... That's what's going to alert the cultists. It's going to be Thaddeus going. Whoa! I mean, you are a little uh, of the of a, a similar slim stature, but I did prepare a a, 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 a sedative if you. Uh, you need to take the edge off. I can just, you know, give you a little dose. No, 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 not, not for the minute. We, we, we don't know what's going to... I mean, later, yes, of course, but we, we, we don't know what's going to happen. And uh, I'd rather have my wits about me in case whatever that was comes back. Well, okay. I put the deadly syringe in my pocket again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for the time when someone needs some relaxation. Permanent relaxation. So... <clears throat> Should we disturb him? Is this a French thing? I mean, did he turn? I, I don't know. He's not oh, singing Lord. bloody Frère Jacques, is he? <laughs> I didn't know he knew. Marseille. I didn't know. I mean, did you? It's those damn tomes, he says. It's your wizard bullshit. I thought we were. You should have just stuck to dry as dust academic texts like me. This is dangerous. We should stop him. How do we stop him? I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't even know what he's doing. Well, he's clearly I, I'm, doing I'm, the same thing as. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to go bacon. around and say. Presumably, your eyes are still open, Olivier, because you're like chanting. I, I assume so. I don't. Know. Yeah, it, it doesn't put you into a trance. Like you're, okay. you're in full oh, control okay. of your fast. Okay. So, so he's, he's, I'm he's, just going to go around and say, Olivia, if you're all right and you'd like us to leave you, leave you be, just nod your head. There we go. It's minded. Okay, we will pub off to the side and have a smoke. Okay. <laughs> so half an hour later, uh, <laughs> Olivier, uh, it costs you ten magic points. Ooh. Is that Ooh. a problem? Are uh, we? Yes. That is. Are we? Problem. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. I thought this was going to be quite a cheap one. Yeah, uh, turns out apparently not. Um, my max is eight. Yeah, I think because I'm basing this on an existing thing, yeah. um, and I've modified it already. 
So I okay, think okay. we're going to modify that bit as well because I did intend it for for it to be uh, like more usable than that. Because ten is a whopper. <laughs> like you need, That's you almost need silly. like a second person to cast it yeah. at that point. It's, it's Hello. Rare you get that many anyway. <laughs> <laughs> like well, volunteers. Um, Re regain those points. So I'm gonna say let's go with. Let's go with uh, four. That seems that seems okay. Okay. It's probably amount to nothing, but it gives me experience with spellcasting. Yep. When when you cast spells, uh, is it like D and D? You sleep and you regain power points, or? I think you regain them by day. Yeah, if you. Like go to sleep and next day you'll have some back at least we'll mm. figure that yeah, out yeah they go up yeah. gradually because i it took me a while to get mine back after yeah. casting that spell at bacon's oh mm. okay yeah yeah i suppose like call of cthulhu is one of those games where you you might just end up having a full party of sorcerers <laughs> and cultists <laughs> As if that so yeah uh please olivier feel free to Give us a roll of Cthulhu Mythos with an extra die <laughs> to take a shot at. Like. Ooh, ooh. Uh, bonus. That's fucking on the money. <laughs> okay. If you if you want to spend the one luck that I, it takes, I will. I certainly will spend <laughs> the one luck. Thank you very much. Fuck me! I was expecting to do that at all. I was like, "Yeah, I'm just gonna lose." Nice. I presume that's how it works. I don't exactly know how the bonus die works. I don't know. Oh. The, there's a bonus penalty on the. Uh, yeah, thing. and which which yeah, I mean, has been clicked. Yeah. So, selected yeah. bonus. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. So yeah, let's let's roll with that. Yeah, that seems great. So it is. <laughs> Uh, so you're you were thinking of like wh what what was your line of thinking exactly? Well, my line of thinking was kind of trying to pinpoint some of maybe some of its memories of uh -huh. when it originated uh -huh. in this world and why it's it's moving like that, uh -huh. where it's going. I think it's um, you understand that this thing is more of a uh, it, it features in sort of mental landscapes only like it's a it's a dream creature uh, to your understanding it doesn't belong in reality yep it most certainly it was there <laughs> like it was not a hallucination on your part um it's a dream creature that uh lives beyond the stars uh, which doesn't like it, it it does not exist on land uh, or sea or air or anything it's a figment of mankind's imagination uh oh good on on, on some level okay so it shouldn't it's literally the thing that should not be uh, mm -hmm. well if the others are still having a smoke at the side of the road I will hop off the cart and uh, let them know my mental research. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you reach into the Akashic memory of, <laughs> of mankind and you, you pull out this ah, idea this that memory. You, you, you know that people have had dreams and nightmares about these things, but they're not physical. That explains why you saw it in your dreams, Clinton. Mm, yes. I suppose it does. I say, like, light, lighten up like about my fifth cigarette while I've been studying. Yes, it's going to take a while to cast, I'm afraid. But why is this. And he kind of stops himself. I suppose that's no reason to ask why. Well, look, the we, we appear to have uh, a couple of choices. We either turn around and go back, or we. We we press on to that clearing and see what's going on. Yes, um. I can't I can't say that I'm 
<laughs> that I, I greatly desire to, uh, to to go there, but uh, everything we, we, we've done recently seems to be leading us there. It does, yes. Hmm. What I'm hoping is if a spell like that takes half an hour to cast, then whatever they're doing is taking them ages to cast well, it. I, I hope so. I mean, they, they, they apparently started it a number of days ago. So, well, so, if the plan that our, our friend told us about, they should have been here on the fifth. I, 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 I think if we're going, to, we're going to carry on up ahead. We should, we should probably go on foot. That they, they might hear us if we take the, if we take the slide. We, we can tether the horses up here and uh, go on on foot. I think we should at least uh, get a little closer and uh, see. And uh, secretly, he hopes that they already did what they did, and we just yeah, slowed. that you're late. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the, the plan is to drive a little bit closer and then hop off the the cart and proceed on yep. foot. Although Clinton, like, although he's sort of like trying to steal himself against it, he obviously really is not keen on going there. But he's like, we we sort of have to. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a feeling, Clinton, that you have somehow, after this, the shadow falling upon your uh, sled and then the subsequent chanting and whatnot, you feel somehow different. Um, you, you feel a little bit like, sort of, at the same time, more free to do things hmm. but also at the same time a little bit less secure yeah. it's almost like you've been detached from a certain order of events uh, following that particular scene okay so I'm going to take a, a fortifying slug from my flask trying to pull myself together a little bit uh, and I'm going to say okay well let's get going then Right, so you take the sled a little bit further, you spot on the left side now, this time, uh, a side path yet again. Do you want to pursue that, or do you want to stay on target? Stay on target. Yep, so we... Pursue... I'm assuming there's just like another one of those like obelisks down there, and they've sort of arranged them along, for right or wrong, but they've arranged them along the path, so... Seems reasonable. Most surely. <laughs> but alas, that was really the way where the sword of God slaying lead. <laughs> it's dangerous to go alone. Yeah, take this. And it's the Necronomicon. <laughs> <laughs> you should have friends when you go. <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, you proceed. Eventually, you start to see the sort of larger clearing where the Mullardock house is. So, is the plan that you leave the sled some distance away? Yeah. And then proceed on foot. Okay. So, Wait, you. Since yeah. it's. I mean, are we still in the woods? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The woods, as far as you can tell, kind of go up to the shore. Okay. Can we see any? If we see the house or the building, or whatever yeah, you, it is. you can see it's it's dark, but you can start to see the silhouette against the horizon. Okay, but there's no like it's not lit up by. Uh, let me check. Uh, it's not greatly lit up now, and there's no like bonfires or like torch lit. Uh, passages. Oh, it, oh, it is late at night, so. Yeah, yeah it is very dark. Because this is one of those things that we don't have a lot of the time these days. Actual darkness with the open sky above. Yep. So you proceed along, crunching on the snow covered ground. Yeah, obviously, we'll be trying to move quietly as much mm -hmm. as we can, but. Yeah, things being what they are. Yeah. So you um, you approach the Mullardock house. 
where you presume, I, I think the presumption is, at least listening to Lister, is that you can expect cultists to be around, including some named individuals that you've been looking into for the past couple of weeks. And uh, yeah, you approach the Mallardock house. So the black mirror of Loch Mallardock stretches out. It's a long, thin cut between the mountain ridges that contain it. And you see the Mallardock house itself stand uh, on the loch's eastern end, so where you're approaching it. It's not as impressive as you might have imagined. Uh, it's the largest two-story stone hunting lodge. It's rather ugly. There are two small cars in front of it, almost completely hidden by snow. There are no footprints or tire tracks that you can see, uh, so the snow has covered them all. There's a thin white mist that rolls up from the water and uh, past the house. There are no, there's no noise, there's no lights, there's no movement. What do you do? As we approach the creepy old house. Mm -hmm. That seems to be a reasonable thing to do. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's I think, I think if, if ever there was a time to like have your revolvers on standby, chaps. <laughs> yeah. With that said, I suppose I will get my revolver on standby. I, I imagine I've got mine tucked in my belt so I can reach it if I need to, but I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm using my cane because I'm worried I'll trip over if I'm like. Yeah, Clinton is yep. going gangster. He had just uh, the gun in his uh, belt. Yeah, it's just like, cock the hammer, put yeah. it in your pants. <laughs> Olivier puts the revolver behind his ear. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Just puts it in his, his sleeve and just rolls yeah, it up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I guess, uh, fuck life, we approached <laughs> the hunting lodge. Yeah. Roll, roll upon my crib, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> There you go, oh, straight boy. out of London. Yeah. Straight out of Compton. <clears throat> okay, um, wrap aside. Um, as soon as you move, the mist thickens around you. And the visibility lessens, but as it does, uh, you catch a glimpse of something new. Uh, between you and the Mullardock house stands another structure, a large white arc, ceremonial, and not unlike the marble arc by Hyde Park. And I have a, sh uh, a handout to you, which you should be able to see. It was not there a moment ago. You slowly become aware of other buildings as well. The mist is gone and you're standing in the middle of a city that does not belong here. It's a gracious city of indeterminate age. There's nothing immediately in evidence to place it past the 18th or 17th centuries. It is laid out uh, around half the shoreline of a calm lake. And the other half you can see uh, is lightly forested with firs and birch. Elegant buildings rise up the steep slopes from the water arranged about plazas, avenues, pools, and canals, and formal parks and gardens. There's architecture of all kinds that you can see, but most of the city has a formal Italianate feel with white marble bell towers, ornate relief work, small bridges, columns, red roof tiles, and marble domes. In the twilight sky, twin suns are setting. Uh, do we want to call it there for this time, or do we want to continue? Yeah, I mean, that's a good cliff. Yeah, it yeah, sounds like a good place. Yeah. I mean, clearly we're not sounds like a good place, yeah, that's true. <laughs> the rain is clearly we're not in Kansas anymore. No. no. Okay, so that is it for this session. What's up? Thank you very, uh, thank you very much for running it. Yeah. Yep. Thank Thanks. you, Johan. Right, I suppose I should stop the recording there then. Yep, yep.